car. She just bring it in. Yeah. <laughs> Bring in the bring in the max because we had what I said we had nine of them last time, which was a little bit of an exaggeration. But Are you still a Mac fanboy after all these years? I am. I'm a huge Mac fanboy. What's about Max that you like? Um, they they work well and they lower total cost of ownership. Oh Jesus! <laughs> and uh, wait, lower <laughs> as in like a dollar lower? Um, I drink to that. Kind so, of. It depends. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, here, here's, yeah. some, here's some Mac boys. <laughs> Mac boys. And I, and I love PCs, too. Actually, you're the way. You converted I'm, me I'm, to I'm a Mac, Mac boy. fanboy. I'm not going to lie. Air uh, or Pro? Whatever. Honestly, like, that Mac over there is from a company I no longer work at many, many years ago. And I love it to death. It's an old, old one. It yeah, holds up. That's the other thing. They, they last a lot of times. But they can be incredibly frustrating, too. Right, if you get everyone on one platform, and then you're like, I'm going to throw a bunch of Macs in the mix, that can you get everything built around you know, into the biggest problem with Macs is what's that? Mac users. <laughs> well, they, they, do you find they bother you a lot? I feel like they do their own thing. They never, you never have to really no, talk to them no. much. I don't want to get into that right now. I love my Mac users. Mac users, special, I, special I do people. Too. We just tell them. I love them have because no support, they don't put yeah. tickets in ever. For, uh, most of them. They got to support themselves. They they do. That's great. That's what I mean. I think, we're, total on, cost I think we're alive. Now. I think we're alive now. It's cool. Let's just keep rolling. Welcome to the Cog Cognitive Load Podcast. <laughs> oh wait a second. That's sorry. We're gonna the calculus of IT. Yes. Podcast. <laughs> no cognitive loads tonight, Mike. Nope. Are you sure? Do you, do you, sure? you know? What, do you know what you're doing? I'm learning about email this week. Who's I'm going to a class right here. Between us. <laughs> have, have you have you used email before? Uh, CC mail. You remember CC it? mail. CC mail. Mutt and pine. And then uh, you know I graduated to Lotus. <laughs> nice. Wait, you skipped you skipped Eudora. Never did Eudora. We oh. just upgraded to send mail this week <laughs> over the weekend. We're uh, we love send mail. So, so I'm Nate McBride. This is. I'm Michael Crispin. Michael Crispin. And this young man right here is Stephen Simmons. Stephen R. Simmons. Hi, everyone. Who's going to bring up the respectability of this podcast by a thousand fold. That's right. We're going to take pressure on you. No, it's all well, right. Well, we didn't give him headphones because, A, I don't have them. I remember, if you remember from last episode, I couldn't afford the, um, the second level podcaster starter pack. <laughs> so... <laughs> We didn't get the third headphones. I was expecting. I was going to bring some, but I I have some at home that are that are wired. They're so old that <laughs> when I put them on, they leave things all over my ears and face. Well, like well, they're, I, they're, they're disintegrating around the ear pad. I feel bad because Steve doesn't realize that we're listening to Paul Oakenfold right now on headphones. <laughs> we're <laughs> not even. Good, we're just making noise right now. <laughs> yeah, he, he thinks we're like listening to him. Oh boy. Uh, well, Steve, it's great to have you here. We're going to talk, talk to about see you in just a moment and like what you're doing and why you're here. And I noticed the tape on your shirt, on your jacket, by the way. Well done. Yeah. Covering that logo up. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, so this is a Calculus of IT podcast. This is our second episode. We actually made it. We weren't here last week because uh, holidays. I almost was. I almost Wait, Did up. you do the podcast by yourself last week? No, but I was about to show up and you told that me. Would've, that would have been funny because I wasn't here. I was That's in right. Iceland. Yeah, you told me that. I'm glad I didn't come over. So this I, I could play this Pac-Man or Mortal Kombat you know, too. I gotta tell you, I learned something in Iceland. It's pretty funny. So you know how they have like these volcanoes there, and they're like super long names. Okay. Yeah. They just mash a bunch of letters together. And in Iceland, they say the names out loud, and I can't pronounce the names. I'm not a giant spoon for that. But Americans just gave up. Like when they had, when, when volcanoes were erupting over there, Americans just said, you know what? We're just gonna call it like E plus fifteen. For, for the number of letters. So now they all, all the Americans call all the, all the volcanoes in Iceland, you know, some letter plus some number because they can't, they don't even try to pronounce them. It's a hard language to speak. Yeah. And so I have no point to that story, but that's what I learned in Iceland. Oh, I thought you were going to like Sigur Ross or, or something. No, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to call you C plus five. I could go with that. I like that's, that. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm going to call you from now on. This C is the, plus five. This is the C. Plus, and that's a lot of letters. Podcast brought to you by. Do we have a sponsor this week? I don't know. I have no idea. Lamp. Sponsored by Lamp. Sponsored yeah. by Lamp. 
Hello, lamp. I think they are lamps too. They light up the light up the room. They light up your life. To keep to keep all lit. Mm -hmm. They're is warm it, it? if you get nice warm lights, but they take up too much power. So now on the social can... media they say lit AF. You know what the AF means? No idea. Astroturf. You know what the AF means? means? I, 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 I actually I do. Didn't know the things. What does lit AF mean? Lit has fudge. Is this PG thirteen? No, no, we got. <laughs> when we, we uploaded our first episode to Apple, it said explicit. You may have noticed in the in the last episode, if you watched the entire thing, there are a few like I thought few were tired, like things, little things. <laughs> we got like, a little bit over it. Your head is over here. Now it's over here. <laughs> the miracles of modern digital technology. Yeah. The critics loved our first episode, by the way. Really? Well, my mom, my mom loved it. Nice. <laughs> Actually, she didn't really actually watch the whole thing. She watched the first five minutes. And she well, it. that's the thing. At the beginning, we might have to fade ourselves in a little bit earlier because I feel like didn't think their sound was working. That's sort of feedback I got was <laughs> <laughs> they're talking, but there's just this ominous music. They know play. what they're doing. <laughs> it's like I can't hear them talking. Is there something wrong with with is this whole episode going to be just music and them talking? So yeah, I mean, well, people that listen to the audio version. Didn't have that problem because right. you know there was a nice like a very long lead in, yeah, that designed by you, yeah, that was very long. I shortened it a lot. It was originally six and a half minutes. <laughs> I figured that would be way, way, way too long, so that, I saved that for myself and played on my so way. The, the remix, the seventeen minute remix. We're not going to use that one this, this time. No, until we can play it for the entire episode in the background. <laughs> That's actually not a bad idea. And I'll get a light show to go with it. So, well, we should point out that in addition to the audio version we do have a video version of this podcast which is on youtube um i forget the name of the youtube channel the calculus of it yes dot at the calculus of it, at calculus yeah. of IT. um YouTube. and what i did with the episode one and i'll do with this episode is we'll chop it up into this the piece of the podcast where we're talking about nothing which is right now then the piece of the podcast where we'll have the book reading which is coming momentarily hang tight then we'll have the piece of the podcast, which is the rest of the bullshit we talked about for a long period of time. So so let's, let me chop up in three parts. So there's reading. There's re I have to read. It's a read. I said I have my classes now. Okay. It's very, right. very relaxing. Right. Yeah. It's in Tory time. It is. Right. For relaxing times. Bullet time. Bullet time? Log of bullet time? By the way, we're getting zero money from sponsors, so. You can say any brand you want. No one's going to give a shit. Oh, by the way, I got to give a shout out before we get started to Cal. Remember Cal is? Cal gave us this kick ass. Yeah. Sniff. Uh, not sniffer. Uh, That's like Chat crap. GPT, what it is. It's a crap. What it's a. Uh, it's a dog. No, it's got a special meaning. It'll come to me in a minute. But thank you, Cal. The whiskey bottle. And for the glasses. Decanter. Decanter. It's a decanter. Decanter. Thank you. Yeah. Cow. Now I feel like an idiot because I didn't know what it was called. But um, I'll put my log of bullet in it later. But thank you very much for that. And we got some like pistachios and things too. Yeah, someone um, sent these to me. Pistachios. No, they sent them to me. Oh. Cal sent them. Oh, to Cal me. sent them to you. Yeah. So whoever Cal is, we love you. The pistachios too? The, keep supporting the. Yes. Cal, Cal thank you. Too. This is great. I got you them all over. We don't know who Cal is. No. We don't know who he, who he is. Or, or, or she. Could be, could she. Yeah. Or yeah. could be a they. Yeah, sure. Or it could be an acronym. Sure. Or I mean, we could be raided any minute, basically. It's I'm sad. sure we violated some copyrights already. I would think so. So Let's thanks to Lamp for keeping us lit. Uh, AF. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to, before we get into the reading, I wanted to ask a question, which was um, media. Like, where do you get your news from these days? Like your daily, your daily news for for IT and stuff. Where do you get it from? A number of places. I, I so That's I a like terrible answer, I like right. techmeme dot com slash river. <laughs> I'm serious. Tech meme is the best. Okay. I like that for, for tech news. I like Twitter. If Twitter you're apps. under eighteen, do not go to that website that Mike just said. I have no idea what's there. Why don't you pull it up? You'll, you're not, gonna love it. I'm gonna look. I, I, I highly have, recommend techmeme dot Turn my audio off on my um. Okay, so let's get back to the question that I asked. Well, I got my news right there. Right. Right? There's a list of it every day. 
Boom. Okay. Very nice. Uh, Feedly, I use Feedly for Feed. all my RSS feeds. Feedly. Okay. Love that. All right. Um, what else? Yeah, I, I use a social media sometimes. But usually, first place I go in the morning is to this techmeme.com slash reading. So how much time do you spend every morning reading? Um, in the morning, not I wouldn't say a lot, but pretty much my in-between, pretty much when I'm not working, I'm reading about stuff. So yeah. add that all up, it's probably, probably two, two hours a day, maybe three. That's good. What about you? I'm about probably an hour a day, and I cruise all the social media sites, and I cruise all the regular uh, mainstream news sites that are online. Um, I kind of take a traditional approach, and I go old-fashioned paper. Right? Are you are you an Wall Street Journal? Are you an yeah. influencer, Steve? Wall Street Journal. It's hard though. It's hard though. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm remiss because we didn't say what Steve is or what he does. Yeah, let's let's. What the hell do you do, Steve? I am a do. I'm a yeah. man of leisure. A man of leisure. <laughs> a man of leisure. <laughs> a man of leisure. <laughs> no, I uh, head up the IT. Department over at Nimbus Therapeutics. Nimbus over in the Seaport in Boston. Oh, seaport. Nice. You love that drive, don't you? I hate it. Satan's driveway, ninety three, right up the gut. It pulls you into the city. Oh, it just pulls God. you. It pulls you. It, like extract, it extracts you. It just pulls you in. Yeah, yeah, it just sucks, sucks your soul. I know that. That's Making that you. merge. <laughs> you come from the north. I come from the south. Okay, I'm sense you. Wow, that's you. So sometimes you cut yeah. through South Boston, sometimes you don't. Drive in the breakdown lane, any okay. any means necessary. Oh, we can get Mad Max here. style. We're psyched to have you here. Glad uh, to be here. Um, I get so in terms of my news. Thanks for asking, by the way, where I get <laughs> mine from. Um, lately, and I'm not plugging these, but I'm just going to say them. So 404 Media. Have you heard of them? I've not. So if you want to find out like what's happening on the 404 Media, right. if you want to find out what's happening on sort of the FOIA front. These these folks um, do an excellent job at investigative journalism into all the terrible shit that's happening with IT, and they go to next level. Uh, Infoworld, which I mostly am skeptical about. Uh, Harvard Business Review Daily and, and MIT Tech Review Daily. MIT Tech Review, I get I get the hard copy of that one. Yeah, I do too, but yeah. I'd rather read the online. I do. It comes too late sometimes. And then Zach Whitaker, I don't know if you read his her weekly security. Um, I have seen, yeah, that's in my feed loop. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, four, four awesome. Right do you now. do any industry specific reading? I mean, this is all industry specific. I mean, in terms of yeah. life sciences, well, stuff, life sciences I, I have I have, uh, I have like a life sciences point. feed yeah, from IP stuff. law. So the IP law feed gives me all the updates. I get the, the, uh, um, stat. I have stat. Yeah. I have, points, um, like you said, same points in this. bio, um, Fierce Pharma. Fierce. Fierce. <laughs> Love the daily firings listings. <laughs> Making sure I'm not on it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's all, all those pieces like that. But most of that is like, it's the same news. It's just sure. slightly twisted depending on who wrote it. Um, all right. So, last, last week, we're going to jump into the reading part of this program. Last week, we talked about um, foundations. Remember that, Mike? Not last week, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, yes. Yes, I do. Foundations. Establishing foundations. foundations of IT, like basically what's your core principles of an IT leader? Um, I'm not going to put you on the spot, Steve, but what are your core foundations as an IT leader? Well, the, the core foundation, the core tenet to my leadership is listening, listening. period, uh, first and foremost. And then... Uh, can, every, you, can you build an IT function on listening? You could start. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can start. Okay. And that's where you can start devising your plan. But in, until you listen, you're not going to know what's going on. Okay. Well, that's going to segue very nicely into this because you just, you're, you're how many days into Nimbus? 75? Yeah, 70. 70 and you're 70. about 100 days or so yeah. plus into so a little, 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 little under, but yes. Yep. And I'm a year and two months into Exilio. So mm -hmm. I went through this. You're going through this. Yeah. You just essentially finish the cycle. Today we're talking about the first 90 days and the 90 day plan, which builds on top of that um, foundations plan. Like you gotta have foundations first. You have a have an ethos before you talk about 90 days. Uh, and so that's what we're talking about today. Um, and there's like a very meta element to this, by the way, which is, <clears throat> I feel like when I talk about the 90 day plan, I'm talking about a story within a story. Essentially, the foundations is your bigger picture. 
Like the thing you're always going to stick by, mm-hmm. your elevator pitch, your um, here's why I'm here, here's what I do. But within that, you have 90 days. You have the first 90 days, which is like the most critical thing. Foundations like mi- mission, vision, vision, all, all those pieces in there. <laughs> so, Mike, we're probably going to get sued for doing this, but. I hope not. <laughs> no, well, it would be me to get sued. But I would, I would have Steve sued, so. Technically, we're not going to get sued. We just have Steve get sued. I say it was his idea. I don't have that much. But I want you to do that. Circular ice cube could have been sponsored. Circular ice cube. Ice cube. Well, thanks. Here's the circular ice cube. Yeah, that could have been the one. Yeah. That's the one. Yep. All, All right. Done. I'm okay. sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Oh. Mm. I'm going to have circular ice cube because a lot of women doesn't do too so well with circular ice cubes. Oh, that's too bad. Because uh, Polly uses that one. So, give me that audible uh, intro. Which audible intro? Oh. This is audible. Chapter 3, The 90 Day Plan. Believe it or not, some consider writing a 90 day plan to be a waste of time and would prefer to wing it when they show up on day one. Not you, of course. It is essential. And I required of my employees that before setting off on a journey such as this, by the way, I didn't write this in here, but this book tends to have some hyperbole in it because I was writing at four in the morning most of the days. <laughs> before setting off on a journey such as this, I'm going to strike that, a framework should first be completed which details the actual activities you will accomplish that will make an immediate impact on the business. Think of it this way. You are hitting the ground running at a brand new company and everyone is going to want your attention now. And there's a footnote. Sometimes people transition very quickly from one company to another with only a few days of rest in between. This is not an excuse not to assemble a plan of action. You are making a considerable change in your life. Why wouldn't you give yourself the best possible chance of success? Back to the reading. They only vaguely care about your three-year plan, at least today. If you do not have a coordinated framework to operate against, then you are seriously diminishing your impact from the start. That is why, in the days leading up to your start date, in addition to constructing your foundation plan, you need to put pen to paper and compose a 90-day plan. And again, footnote. And don't sweat it because you have written so many damn plans You are a planning expert by now. You might even want to share it with your new boss before you start, just to set the tone for how you plan to approach this job. I've done that. Principally, there are several ways to compose a 90-day plan. It could be as simple as one big checklist, or you could follow a model like 531 or Pomodoro, but on a broader scale. I prefer the PDCA. Plan, do, check, act model for creating my 90 day plan. It allows me to assign groupings of actions in the context of what is happening in the company at the moment. And again, a footnote. How do I know what is happening? I grilled my interviewers, I researched LinkedIn, I read the company's press releases, and talked to colleagues and peers who worked there or knew people who worked there. In those four stages of the PDCA plan, they are as follows. Under plan, we have, what do I want to accomplish in the first 90 days to make the most significant positive impact? Under do, we have, how am I going to accomplish those those activities and ensure successful outcomes? Under check, we have, what measures can I implement to check to see whether or not I achieve those outcomes. And under ACT, we have how can I use that information after the first 90 days to keep the momentum going. And this is not a one-time event. This is a cycle. It continues to go from ACT to plan to do to check to ACT to plan and back around. Taking the PDCA approach, here is what a very high-level view of a 90-day plan might look like. Under plan, we would have immediate wins, cost savings, 
organizational design, business relationship development, ensuring the business feels optimistic about IT, and creating a one and three year plan. Under do, I would have create days one through 30 detailed objectives, create days 31 through 60 detailed objectives, and create days 61 through 90 detailed objectives. Under check, I will have IT operational leadership has been successfully transitioned. IT support services are established. IT is aligned with key stakeholders. IT is engaged with the culture. And I am ready to define and present the strategic intent. And under act, I have things such as administrative, security, IT organization, infrastructure, services, performance measurement, and business partnerships and strategy. <clears throat> Once you have completed drafting your 90-day plan, the next step is to publish it to the business. And here I have a footnote. I recommend a broad communication about upcoming tactical items and refer to your 90-day plan in that communication so the business can understand a bit more about your short-term goals. At a minimum, you should publish this for the executive leadership team. Utilize the company's Slack board or Google Drive or whichever other shared environment exists that allows you to create a dashboard for something such as this. Reporting can be a daily or a weekly exercise, but in terms of the do cycle above, I find it is best to update the 90-day plan dashboard in 30-day increments. You may also want to consider hosting monthly lunch and learns. And again, a footnote. We will cover lunch and learns later on in this guide. But for now, just know that they are a useful mechanism for getting employees together to hear what is happening in IT. You will generally achieve decent attendance because, hey, who doesn't like free food? And you might also highlight the accomplishments there as well. Using the example from the ACT IT organization, organizational assessment bracket above, here is what a reporting example might look like. Under area of focus, we would have IT organization. Under a broad task, we would have organizational assessment. Under discrete actions, we would have meet with key stakeholders across the business to gain feedback and assessment of the current MSP. Or develop standard customer feedback process for IT performance measurement. Under administrative, you might have as a broad task assess the budget. And under discrete actions, review all of the operating expenditures to date to understand what the business has been purchasing. Or review any IT consultant contracts, including MSPs. Under infrastructure, as a broad task, you might have site assessment or cloud. And for cloud, you might have constructing a backup plan. Until the task is fully completed, the percent complete column in the chart is meant to capture an approximate percentage of how much is completed to date. Now, this is not innovating, but I'll point out, because I'm reading a table here, that when you present this information to your readers in the organization, they don't want to understand things like in progress or nearly completed. Give them percentages. That's a, a verifiable number. You can back that up with data. If you show 90%, it gives them the feeling that they're understanding you're mostly completed with the task. Use the comments field, which again is in the table, to describe accomplishments from the prior period, in this case 30 days, to explain why it is or is not yet completed. You may elect to use some other metric, such as a traffic light or a more oblique phrase, such as completed or in progress. Now, I'm only saying that in terms of the comments, not the percentage complete. Percentage complete should be a number, but in comments you might have something like completed or in progress. Whatever it may be, ensure that your audience has some understanding of a measure of progress. At each of the 30-day stages, 30, 60, 90, roll up your progress into a short slide deck and present it to the executive team. If it is not possible to get a slot in their docket, which it can be hard to do sometimes, Share it with them and ensure it has the appropriate color to determine, demonstrate 
that you are making progress in bringing the company forward. In either case, this is your opportunity to plant your flag in the ground and say, not only am I making forward progress, but look at all the progress I have made so far. It may not line up to throw you a parade, but at the very least, by the way, there's some more hyperbole going in. At the very least, you can take stock in knowing they have been informed as to what is happening with technology in the business. A 90 day plan will ensure that you keep yourself moving forward amidst all the distractions that are sure to be headed your way. Like a foundation plan, this is ostensibly more beneficial for you than it is for the business. However, there may be several critical areas in your 90 day plan focused on finding gaps and issues and providing resolutions that affect the whole company. In my experience, I found that other employees, both corporate leaders and colleagues, I found value in seeing my intent spelled out clearly in front of them. This allows for open and engaging discussions on upcoming tactical initiatives. One last note, new events will arise that don't always align with your 90 day plan. You have to be flexible enough to weigh the importance of addressing those events versus remaining myopically focused on your own. If something needs to get pushed out of your 90 day plan into the next phase of time, just note it in the comment section of your plan and make plans to address it as soon as an opportunity arises. No one is going to burn you at the stake on day 91 if you didn't complete every single goal in your plan. I have never had a 90 day plan that was 100% completed at the end of 90 days. Some actions just take longer than others due to circumstances outside of your control. From a chapter three summary perspective, some key takeaways from what I just read. Build a 90 day plan using a model that works best for your personal approach built on your foundational model. Consider making it a requirement for all of your future IT staff that they too create 90 day plans when they come on board. A 90 day plan should have discrete objectives with measurable outcomes, and it is advised that you make this information publicly available. Provide updates every 30 days to the executive leadership team. Be focused on accomplishing the tasks and goals you set for yourself in the 90 day plan, but not so inflexible that you cannot adapt to adverse environmental changes. If you need to move actions out of your 90 day plan for a future date, do so, but then comment in your notes as to why you had to do this. A 90 day plan is a framework for you to significantly impact the business right from day one and remain focused despite all the distractions of starting a new company. In terms of pro tips, Include tasks that are clear tactical wins for the business. While this is akin to sandbagging, it is an approach that does nicely counter some of the more abstract goals you will have. Along those lines, add a tactical goal or two to resolve known pain points for executive leadership members or EAs. Find a way to incorporate a checklist format. Checking things off feels not only pleasing, it also visually demonstrates progress for your audience. And then at the last pro tip, share your 90 day plan with future IT employees so they can have an idea of what you would like them to consider when they are writing their own 90 day plan. In terms of life science hacks, a 90 day plan does not differ too much from company to company. Most nascent life science companies rely on MSPs, which will make half of your 90 day plan consistent from location to location. Once you write your first one, chances are good you will be able to reuse the majority of it should you find yourself again in this role. And in addition to prioritizing executive pain points, make a bigger deal out of addressing finance and quality needs as well. They will be critical partners for you down the road. And lastly, things to watch out for. I once created a 90 day plan and when I knew some things weren't going to get done, I was a bit over aspirational. I, I simply deleted them from the plan, thinking no one would notice. Well, people did notice. And one of the people that was my boss <clears throat> found the behavior a bit underhanded. I put the deleted items back in, and that's when I started including my comments column. Avoid using the words me, my, or I when creating your plan or presenting your outcomes to others. Use words like us, are, or we. 
even if you're only a department of one. It will sound weird at first when you are speaking about IT from a second person perspective, but it will ensure the focus remains on IT accomplishments and not just you. Further to that point, when you are making presentations and other similar items, use the word IT as often as possible when relating tactical actions. For instance, IT is upgrading the printers this week, or IT will be patching XYZ server next month. Again, if you're an N of one, it doesn't sound right, but it will matter very much later. Well read. Thank you. Good night. Thank you very much. I had this great sort of the, content. The deep gravelly throat thing going on there. I know my my voice is a little weird tonight. It's a little dry in here. Okay. What do you think about that cognitive load, Mike? Loved it. Agree with pretty much everything you said. I think um, you know. Having those kind of core tenants and things that you're focused on are really important. And being able to connect and reach out to people, like I said in the last episode, is huge. You just mentioned listening as being so so big. Um, the 90-day plan is, is very core to just keeping you on track and the organization on track as you move through the, the adventure of the first 90 days. Um, one thing I like that I it was a pretty simple thing that is, is the percentages. Yeah, you mentioned the percentages, and I often was like, "Oh, in progress." <laughs> so that's why I do that myself. Um, and uh, but I think that's definitely being able to give a thirty-day update as to where things are at is really effective. Yeah. Um, even if it's just a digest, just to give an update because everyone's always so busy and trying to, like I said, trying to get to the room and maybe have some of those discussions can be difficult depending on where you are. Um, but um, yeah, I think the ninety-day day is ninety-day point is hugely important, and it gives you a Kind of a, a, a yardstick to go by as you're going through the, the first 90 days. It also helps bring the organization, the, the entire organization, along as you're kind of building credibility by showing what you've accomplished in some respects, right. what your team has accomplished. Um, sometimes just sending an all company email and being like, oh, we're going to do this now, and there's some progress, and people are come by the office and say hello and ask questions. Um, Lunch and learns hugely important. Um, you know, I'm trying to get those started where I am right now on, on some of the things that I'm doing. Yeah. Um, but that's an absolute great uh, topic and point where I think you'll see like attendance go up as you put impactful tools and technologies and processes in, into the business, and it's um, that, that can be really fun. That also helps you network because yeah. people are going to ask you. Sometimes we'll send you some softball questions, and other times they're ones that they'll challenge you on, and it, it helps you be a better public speaker and a better leader, too. For sure. So uh, I, I agree with everything you've got, and there's so much stuff that you covered there. Um, but I, I, thought, I think it's great. It's, it's important it, for, to for a short time. chapter, it's dense in terms of it is. what you present out. So, Steve, your, your thoughts? Well, your, your, your approach brings everybody, everybody along for the ride. So it's not your journey alone, because in reality, you're supporting all of these people to be able to do their job. Yeah, right? yeah exactly. you're, you're enabling them, and you, you kind of want to be transparent, right? It's um, you don't want IT to be in the way, but like you know, explaining yourself. And I, I, I guess I have a question. So with the with the ninety day plan, do you take other input? And other feedback from the business, yeah, um, and, and putting that plan together, because so when I when I started at Nimbus, I yeah. I was going in uh, pretty similar to this approach, but I found that my remit and what you yeah. know the people hiring me wanted me to do was was totally different. So when you were talking about the detour yeah. over there, I hit several. Detours, and I, mm -hmm. I had the course correct. Um, still staying on track, and you know, sure. trying to yeah. weave in that ninety-day plan within all of that for me for me was a little bit more difficult. You because that it, agile mindset too, that you're able it to push kind of some things go down different roads. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I guess my question is: is you know, you know, you want to bring everybody along for the ride. You want to make people feel part of. Part of the journey, and you're going to get the most help when you do that. Mm -hmm. So, what's the best approach to um, 
getting people on board from that aspect and helping you with your plan and identify, especially when you're new, identifying what needs to be done. In, in your interviews there, you're going to get those pain points, right? You're going right. to hear right away what can have the quickest impact. And if there's low hanging fruit, you know, you, you can, I think you can take some of those detours. Well, sir. So let me, no, it's, so let me, I'll, I'll be completely blunt with you, is that uh, the majority of my 90 day plan is written before I <laughs> walk in on day one. I would say, to a degree, the actual framework I'm going to use is is itself complete. Uh, there's room inside of it for change, but in terms of um, like my first 30 days consist of just a few key goals. One of which is uh, talking to every stakeholder. Okay, so 30 days, it's a sprint. So it's 100 days, employees. Yeah. I'm talking to 100 employees. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, like straight up, it's no problem. Uh, my my days are just going to be 20 minute meetings back to back to back all day long. I want to hear from everybody, or I'm going to be going to desks, or I'm going to be applying to people in the business, right? But as feedback is coming in, number one, it should align with what I already know. Like when I interviewed at company XYZ, I probably interviewed with say seven to 10 people. And what I heard from my future boss and my boss's boss and all the other executives that interviewed me is their pain points. Like mm-hmm. I have a good idea. And I asked them, like, okay, so. If I came in there on day one, like what would be your top priority for me? And the CFO is going to say, well, NetSuite or whatever. <laughs> like it's it's not working with so and so. I want that to work. Like, why that can't one. it work? And I'm going to be like, in my back of my mind, okay, cool. But some of that should come out during the interview process that you have to get the job. Right? right. You're going to hear a lot about that stuff when you if you ask the right questions during the interview and get plugged in and, and that can get you excited for a job too because then you go for the second round and you have some background <laughs> right as to what what people are feeling yeah. and you said listening huge like that's the biggest thing well and it's a big thing it's a, it's a big thing but it's also so I'm, I'm picking this up during the interviews right and then i walk in and i'm like okay cool the week before i start or the the, the weekend before i start I'm, I'm actually writing this plan out so and i i email it to my future boss i say okay here's what i'm going to do just yeah. so you know, like, so we're full transparency, like, here's my plan. Questions. Do you have any questions about the plan? Like, <laughs> here's what I'm going to do. They don't know what no, you're just doing come that. on in here. Just good. They're like, just, I'm not reading all this. Like, I, I, like, I'm not reading all this shit that you just gave me, Nate. Like, no, no, that's pretty much what I get. Usually. Just take care of it. <laughs> like, I've seen ah, your plan. Who, who are you? Why, why are you? Them. Like, why did I hire you? That kind of stuff. Uh, <laughs> but there's that part. But then I do get in there and I do hear things that contravene what I had written. And my plans. I'm like, okay. So my plan, let's say, for instance, by day 60, I have to have control of all the backups. Let's just yeah. say, example, right? Well, let's say MSP ABC is like dragging their feet on getting the accounts, and I can't see them, and they're not working, and I want to figure it out. Well, I have two choices, right? Punch it to the third segment yeah. of the plan, punch it to post any days, or resolve it. Now, resolving it might take me eight more hours than I had planned. So then I have to figure out what else is gonna get pushed. But I have a choice right there to make. But I'm walking in there saying to myself, uh, in sort of like week nine, I am going to have my backups completed. I'll have full control. That's my goal, that's my goal date. So, so I have a preconceived notion. I am taking input from the business. The input from the business maybe affects a quarter of my plans. But this is, might have been a considerable data loss in that scenario, is what you heard. Yeah, like, like if I'm in interviews and they're saying, you know, we have no idea where our data is or we're really concerned about loss, yeah. then I'm going to bump that up the table. Not too much. It's not going to go from week nine to week three because that's just not enough time. Mm-hmm. But it's going to go, I'm like, I'm going to focus on that earlier. But it's in my plan. You see, Maybe so because like, they've been bitten by it before, right. but that's right. Or, or, or there was a security incident, right? They had, they had a, they had a leak or a phishing attack. Oh, they're, 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 they're attuned yeah. to that. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, you know what? I'm not going to come in there and like do SSO on day four. And that's why I think the 90 day plan and kind of back to the foundational plan that you had mentioned in the first episode, right? The, the podcast is that's like your principal plan. And you've got to be able to be flexible, and not when you go and you have when you interview people, and a lot of sometimes you'll get interviewed and you'll you'll have those discussions, and yeah. then you get in the job and they're like, 
yeah, like uh, surprise. Ah, I totally lied. Other, there's all these other things that we're gonna have to look at. Yeah. Boom. Uh, and but your foundational plan, your principles, and your stack, and maybe the things you're thinking about, how you you may not happen as fast, but you'll be able to actually have those to help principally lead your your vision, and your strategy. Yeah. While you while you kind of get your arms around the culture of the business. You know, the new people that are coming on board and what companies they've come from, big and small, well, different well, mindsets. Hold on. Sorry to interrupt. No, on, go right on, on the problem. culture of the business part, you should already know this. You should. Some of that is to, to, to the point of like coming or, in the or organization. Or you didn't do your job in interview. You, sometimes you interview with two or three yeah. people and you, you're coming to a 500-person company. That's That can be hard to, to figure out. Well, then, then I'll or, stipulate, but I'll say that. For, during, for a 20-person company, sure. During but, your interviews, you should be. Digging into that because yeah, yeah. if you walked in there on day one, you're like, oh my god! But remember, the people that are interviewing you are often selling you. They're selling you a job. They're selling you a business. You're going to get the most rosy picture of everything. And sure. sometimes you get into a job and you realize, hey, there's some pockets here of things that I'm going to need to work on and, and to, to connect and build a relationship and build rapport with. And it's you don't always get an interview. Well, I hope you'll be here next week for the key stakeholder interviews. I might have to. I might have to come back. You should come back. You should because, come back from that. Because in that yeah. meeting, what is your favorite color? What kind yes, of candy do you like? Favorite color, favorite candy, favorite food, favorite drink. Thank you very much for coming. And that's all you need to know. <laughs> that's Not it. A spirit animal. Like what's your what's spirit your, animals? What's your spirit animal? What 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 are those the, the the cubes there with the colors? The insights. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had someone? And the Myers Briggs. You ever had someone bring you their brick? And put no. it down in. Okay. So I've had this. I just got measured too. You did? I'm a dove. What you call it? Oh, I'm I'm yellow. Okay, so I'll tell you I'll tell you a funny story. I'm an introverted extrovert. No, you're Never not. That. That's bullshit. That's that's so, what I was told. The last I've taken it four times. <laughs> that's what I was told. Your <laughs> so wheel is spinning. So I've taken it four times. Each time I've changed my color. And um, I was talking to a colleague of mine recently. About, actually, I was talking to Erad about this a while back. Okay. And she's like, "Why is that?" I said, "Because I manipulate it." It's just like, so you're basically like all the colors, manipulating colors, that explains a lot. And yeah, but I, you keep contradicting yourself. The test never ends. It just goes on. They just kind yeah, of. Yeah, no, I just keep. And, and you just randomly select things too. It's often actually more right than if you actually purposely select things. Anyway, really? I don't want to digress, but I've had someone come into me and say, so, you know, nice to meet you. I'm so and so. And I'm like, cool, sit down. They're like, boom, I'm a red. I'm like, I still need. I actually I've never. Cool. Never gone through it. I've been inv- gone to the invited the meeting. I couldn't go or whatever else. And I, d- I did the Myers Briggs, but I haven't done the inside stuff yet. I need to do that. It's mostly interesting. Like if you have blues and reds in a room together, theoretically they're supposed to arrive at some like fantastical conclusion. Really? Through hours and hours of hating each other. And then if you have yellows and greens together in a the room, they're supposed to arrive at a conclusion after hours and hours of hugging and just kind of sobbing. That sounds about right, yeah. But <laughs> if you mix like green and red together, complete war. Total like chaos. Those are two primary colors. Because right? because I'm a red and all I want is data. Like don't give me your like your whole like how you got there. Philosophy. <laughs> yeah. Just high level. Hey, thanks for the data. See you later. That's me. It's like, ah, it's just going to work out, man. It's cool. But greens are like, ah, tell me about the data. Yeah, tell just... me about how you're doing. Yeah. Like, that's why greens and reds are like, kadoosh. It's like making the mountain of mashed potatoes, which yeah. I do like better than mayo, by the way. I love mashed potatoes. Just Wait, they're about... not our sponsor, though. Lamp is our sponsor. Oh, Lamp. Lamp. Sorry. Lamp Thanks to the people at Lamp for keeping us lit AF. There's another, there's another <laughs> camera up there. There's three cameras. That's the secret camera right there. Is that always online? Is that a twenty four seven webcam like type thing? Yes, it webcams me playing magic and goes around your pool. <laughs> I love that. I stream it on Twitch, but really from far away, nobody can see how bad I am. That's, That's what we should it. do. We should do a live Twitch podcast. There's know, so many life sciences that. professionals on Twitch. You know? Like like Discord? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Turning it around. That's what we're doing. All right, so ninety days. You're you're getting there. Oh, like so much. So I so. actually got a, a follow up question, right. here, Mike. And you, yes. you're you're talking about the, the interview process. Yeah. And you actually gave me a tip once. Um, I'm listening. I actually have to log back in here. 
you know, when you were mentioned, you got to ask the right questions, figure out culture and all yeah. that stuff. I found, so there's everybody interviews differently, yeah. but I found when I sat for an interview, if it quickly turned from like Q&A, like shooting questions at yeah. you to a conversation, conversation. Exactly. That's how you know. That's that's where the you know the the real stuff starts to come out, and that's for me. That's where I I was able to kind of dig out some yeah. of the issues, might figure out the culture, yeah, understand some of the organization dynamic, you know, and how things are working. Or when there's someone standing working. outside the door waiting to get in, yeah, and you've gone over twenty minutes because you're in a conversation about. What would be the company, or just how this person? Used really the world. good indicator. That's a good indicator when yeah. people are waiting to get in because mm. you've had a good discussion. That's great. And sometimes it doesn't work out, but it's a great. Yeah. I completely agree. When you say, "Oh my goodness, I got to go," <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that's when because not only that, when you need to work together and need to solve a problem, or you need to un learn something that you don't know, or you need to influence someone, like that's that. You've built a relationship, you're building rapport, and even if you're going to make some difficult change management or something like that, you're going to want that person in your corner because Absolutely. you're building this element of trust. Right. No, I completely agree. Um, and then uh, an another facet, um, kind of the, not so much the plan, but but the do is is also bringing al bringing along the business with you to help be your voice as well. It, you know, it's you know, it's not it's not just me saying we got to do it. Yeah, it, it's it's a function of saying, hey, we want to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, you know, when you announce an initiative, you know, if you're if you're broadcasting what your goals are, you know, and if you can include them again, include them, it just it just seems to hit home uh, a little bit better. I've had I've had better success when I bring somebody along for the. But That's are you looking point. when you? So this is a good point because, again, this is a, this is we'll be covering this next week. But when you think about who you're going to bring along, like it's very easy in the beginning to find out okay who has the most pull. Yeah. And I'm going to plug the EAs again because I love my EAs. I do too. I love them to death. Uh, companies can't run without them. But I feel like if you get the EAs on board, yeah, if they understand. Then you can explain to anybody else, and and they are, I think, sometimes the hardest to convince because they have the worst jobs. No, sorry, let me rephrase that. Busiest. I'm not going to cut that out, but they have the busiest. They're jobs. the busiest jobs. Yeah, they and and they they're under the, the gun. They're they under the gun it. all the time. Yep. God bless them, and yep. they need to be convinced. Yep. So that's where I stand. I want them to understand, and if I get an EA who's like, no. Then I'm rethinking my plan. Before I go to some C level person and, and, and saying, here's my plan, if I don't have full buy in, I gotta rethink my plan. They also very often have their pulse on the culture of the company. Totally. Like immediately. Totally. They know who everyone is and what everyone's doing, where the skeletons are. <laughs> no, we should do, we should do a <laughs> podcast on EAs. Yeah, we should get some, we'll just see if we get, some get, get our EAs favorite on. EAs. Yeah, let's on, bring some EAs here. in. And just have them executive like, assistants. Well, what we can do is we can we can pixelate their faces and then just like mute their their you know like the, do the voice box thing and then have them just talk shit about their bosses. <laughs> 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 Great idea. <laughs> uh, they won't. I don't know if they'll come on for that. That's <laughs> information is power, and they they know it all. Oh, I know. <laughs> They're not going to share we, it with us. <laughs> we can we can bleep out all the all the parts that are important. <laughs> Um. All right. So, so ninety days. Like I think we're all in agreement, or maybe we're not. But let's yeah. let's let's either be in agreement or not on the fact that you need something. Yeah. It, and like it I have to be a I, hard and fast. Plan. I just have a sheet with a list and and just timing, and I I use that. And I go back to it. I share it all the time. So who sees your list? Pretty much anyone I have a one on one with. Okay. So, it could be the program management lead, head of finance. CFO, um, it's kind of legal. Um, even even new people coming over, even during orientation. If I have it's like right now, because I'm a team of one at Cardurian, and we have a, a, an MSP as well, I meet with everyone who starts like one or two days in. Sure. And 
and sometimes it's like, I can't get my docking, you know, when you want with the IT team will want, it's like, I can't get my, my docking station working. Okay, we'll work on that over the, over the phone. Like you're just a Discord to the other highest paid help desk person, <laughs> SVP. Um, really? Anyway, I did, when you get, when you get to the, the point where, okay, they're, they're up and running, you've answered all their questions about the basic onboard. It's like, okay, here's what's going on in the next three months. Yeah. Here's what we're doing. Here's what I That's does. Awesome. Here's how we can work together. Hey, are you interested in any of this? Some people will be like, look, I just brought a board. I got these five other things to do. Okay. Love, love what you're doing. Good for you. Or just, there's no response. Some are like, wow, that's cool. That's, that's something I should, I'd like to be a part of. And maybe I could, I, I've used that before. Maybe, you know, maybe a tool pers- from a tooling perspective. I'd like to help you, you know, make sure that happens. So you get to that last 10 minutes and during orientation, which, you know, in past lives where I had, you know, the bigger companies or bigger teams didn't get that interaction, which, I, you know, realizing I'm doing it now with a smaller company, I missed that yeah. because, you know, you get to connect with everybody. But obviously, if you're a two, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, ten thousand person company, you're not going to be doing that. But it, it's certainly an opportunity to, to build momentum behind the 90 day plan. So everyone gets to kind of see things that I feel if they're in certain departments, what they need to sure. understand. And I'm not concerned that. Maybe this isn't stuff I shouldn't share. It's like if you if it's not interesting, we'll move on. Um, sometimes it's related to the business area we're in. Sometimes it's related to collaboration tools. Sometimes it's related to just the last company they were at and they didn't have the things that they wanted and they'd really like something different here. Um, and that weaves into the ninety day plan. Like, oh yeah, that's in the ninety day plan. Let's talk about that a little bit. So lunch and learn. Yeah. Let's go back to that plan. Free food. Exactly. Yeah. I love lunch and learn. Yeah, we actually do beer yeah. and learn. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, beer and learn. And, and I did my first lunch and learn one weekend. Like, here's yeah. I'm Nate, and here's all this free food. And by the way, I'm about to change everything. And here's I, all the stuff I'm going to <laughs> Enjoy the pizza. I would like, <laughs> I, I'd like to do more lunch and learns. I think some of the struggle comes with people's time, and will they will they show up? Um, and even with free food. Have, like, have you done any yet? I've I've done two presentations, but I haven't done any lunch and learns. Yeah. I have two, hopefully, that are coming up really soon. Like if I could do them, it'd be yesterday. But a lot of times, I think it's small companies that where people are using wearing so many different hats that it, they're concerned. Like, oh, you want to do three lunch and learns for two hours or an hour of their time? Yeah. They got a thousand other things to do. Yeah. So it's, it's planning it appropriately, working with like your head of HR or if you have a corporate communications person. And just like making sure everyone's aligned that that's the right time to do it, but blasting emails out or having one on ones with as many people as you can within reason, just getting people on board is important. But lunch and learns also just uh, I'll just say this I think a lot of times at small companies, people are looking for direction as to what they should do, like especially with no IT department. Let's right. say you're the new, you're number one, right? right. What do I do? Where do I save stuff? What do I, you know? What tools should I use? How but should you, I do you this? can what? use the, the lunch and, and you lose the lunch and learn to do that. Yeah, and they're they're they're, they're asking for it, right? Um, and they're not even some some do some don't, but a lot of people are like, look, I've got this big job over here. I've just walked into um, that's what I'm doing. Just tell me what I need to do. Yeah. What about they you, don't Steve? they don't want you to kind of ask them. Well, should we do it this way or that way? They want you to tell them first. I find. I can agree. I, I haven't started. I haven't started the luncheon. Have they, have they yet. happened prior to your arrival? However, the, not really. Okay. Not really. However, um, for, for my team, it, those are actually goals that mm. they, that they are going to have. Um, you know, we, we do cybersecurity, but do we got a, a do we have a full program? Does everybody know? You know what's going on. So so you know, one of the one of the asks I've had for you know the gentleman heading up our cybersecurity function is you got to stand up in front of people and you know tell them what's going on and it doesn't even have to be work specific but let's yeah. use a cybersecurity you can use example an life. you know it's like how to keep yourself secure at home don't use the same password for your Facebook your Amen. Instagram and your banking account you know what I mean it, yeah. simple things like that. And what is a pizza box? Pizza yeah. box for 20 bucks. But are you on the Facebook? I am on the Facebook. I am right. on the Facebook. 
M E N M E I G. All the students what your what the Facebook. It's name it's, is. it's private. Oh, it's private. It's private. Is it at private? It's just that, private. It's just private. It's like my family. So you're an early, early adopter. Hmm. You have he family. also has a fan page. Yeah. There's a fan page. Mm -hmm. The yeah. dude. Dot com. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like that. Yeah. I have a Facebook. I have a, not a forum. I have a Facebook. I'm not. I'm not on the Facebook. I have this something, something called the Usenet, if you would like. Um, you should get on it. You can post articles and uh, Reddit. Bulletin board? It's <laughs> kind of like Reddit, actually. Can I do ASCII art? You can. That's my favorite. Yeah, it's really do you cool. remember Slashdot, by the way? Yes, I do. It's still around. Do you, do you ever look at Slashdot? No, I haven't. Do you know what I remember most about Slashdot, besides the fact that we were all obsessed by it in the early 2000s, was the day 9 11 happened. Mm. And yeah, Nobody stuff. else could get their new shit together. The slash dot. Slash dot did. Did. Slash shot and Howard Stern. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that all of us were in the bullpen. Yep. On that. On was it? It was on Basher Street. Yeah. Oh uh, no, it was Al Albany. Albany Street. Albany Street. That bullpen and just blew the slash dot. Mm -hmm. They were getting crazy. minute by minute updates. Because they were just they had one feed and, I mean that that's what Reddit is now. Yeah. That was um, and dig dot remember dig dig dot com yes that was Reddit dig? before Reddit yeah. Dude, props to dig yeah and slash dot I remember dig yep. yeah yeah really oh man slash dot brings me back that's just the thing you gotta find something from like ten years twenty years ago and just redo it now you know you know yeah bring back slash dot but like the two thousand one version of slash dot it was awesome. All right. Any other thoughts on the first ninety days? Because next week we're kind of going to stay on the topic of the stakeholder interview, which is part of the first ninety days. Anything else on that, that I talked about today before we jump into all the other shit that's going on in IT? There it is. There's slash dot. There it is. Yeah, Yubikis yeah. right at the top. And it's that same slash dot green. Yep, oh man, changed. that brings me back. All right. So. There's this autonomous intelligence or artificial in, in significance, augmented, augmented information in, inversions. What is it? It is amazing how a the state like AI like I obviously watch too many AI YouTube videos because I mean it's just every two seconds there's something that pops Are you up. Talking about the Skynet. Skynet. Did. Skynet. The Skynet. Yeah, it's happening yeah. right now. Really? Yeah. Now, one of us should effectively be John Connor. We wouldn't know it until we met our past John Connor. That's true. Or you could be my past John Connor. Good. Future John Connor. Isn't that weird? I mean, you could be my dad. Or my son. I'm totally... I don't even know what to say to that. I mean, this guy right here, we don't, do we really know him? Be in a simulation. That's right. As we speak, right? You remember that feeling like you, you wake up in the morning or whenever you might just be walking down the street, like I am a person, like someone, like you have this feeling, like how am I this thing? Like you remember that feeling? <laughs> only, when I I see, only when I see pixels change in front of me when I'm walking down the street, <laughs> like it's a glitch. It's like yeah. I, I am a thing. Like this is my hand and this is my watch, you know, type of thing. Yeah, but you're 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 like a part of entropy, like. You're you're here for now, then you won't be here. You're just gonna like go away. But then all the little parts that make you will come back into another version of something that's not you. Well that's what happens now, right? We kinda of go into the earth and we pump the roots of trees. Oh, you're and... thinking about just general decay. I'm talking about oh. actual entropy. Like oh, okay. actual the breakdown of the atoms that construct you. Yeah. Into the unique you. Capitalist view. Just electrons and other stuff. Yeah, that's like a lot of science, though. We don't want to talk about science. Science sucks. No, not at all. I mean, even though we're in light sciences, do we really know what's going on? No. I, I think that's part of it is we, we may know a little bit about what's like going I can, on. I can, I can talk to somebody about what my company does, but my scientists are geniuses. Like, I don't. They go into the labs and they yeah. do all kinds of genius stuff. If we knew we knew nothing, then we would know something. Oh my God, we'll play that. Right? Yep. All right. Socrates <laughs> over here. I didn't realize we had Socrates <laughs> on the podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Uh, so we have a so special cringe. announcement. So with us. We have so crates with us tonight. <laughs> Cheers to so crates. So crates. We're gonna do wow. A little, more a little drink break for yes, that. Yes. Uh, so crates. So. Crates. Mm. so no. I'm I'm a little bit upset about AI. What upset you, Nate? The fact that <laughs> it's still being talked about. I mean, it's, you think it's just a kind of a, a fad, or just being overblown? Oh, vastly overblown. I don't think it's gotten past the clever stage. So I've been teaching AI at Exilio now for, I'm in my seventh cohort, sixth cohort, sorry. Okay. Uh, so eight weeks, right? Because I had a couple breaks. And, you know, the thing that I keep telling everybody in my class, like this is how I start my class, which is you're not going to be replaced by AI, which is, I, I think it's totally true. It's a key to upskilling. You need to know how to, to write a prompt. It's augmentation. Right. It's a, well, the, the phrase I use, which I picked up from some news bite somewhere, is a force multiplier. Mm -hmm. So if used properly, it's a force multiplier of what you do. But here's the catch, Mike. And again, I tell this to my class. It's just as much, if not more, work to use generative AI to arrive at the same result as either using your own thought or Googling the answer. It's it's this. It, there's no net negative amount of work. I'm going to do less work because I'm going to use AGI. It does not go in. You got to proof it. You got to yeah. proof it. And if you want to, if you want to capture the, the basic, we talked about this last week, but yeah, or last night, interpretability and explainability. Yeah. If you want to be able to explain how the thing that you're going to give somebody else is meaningful and right. You either have to be the world's foremost subject matter expert on that particular topic, mm -hmm. and therefore can dispute any fact that, or suppose the fact that an, uh, an, an AGI sends you, yeah. or you have to go drill the research. If you're the, the former, you don't need to use generative AI. Mm -hmm. You can just know this stuff. If you're the latter, the amount of work you have to do to prove that what the, it, it, like, it spit out is true is equivalent to or more than the work you would have done without it. I think that's why you're seeing the a lot of the what's happening with like copilot and what Google's doing and uh, Box and others. It's, it's more just the busy work. Well, well, what's, well, what's, what's, that's collaborative. That's collaborative. AI. AI. It's not generative. But AI. still that's well technically if you go into Chat GPT and ask it to write you something, then that's that's what a lot of people are using it for right now. And they're using it to write code. And they're writing it to, you know, using which it. Which is to, generally to, wrong. Which is not so much. I mean, there's a lot of uh, IDEs that are out there that are helping recreate uh, developers code. Like, they're allowed to correct and spell check. Spell to check to degree, but you still have to go and back. You can't just trust the code. If it compiles, sometimes they do. If it compiles and it executes, but even still, there's yeah. a level of QA that has to be applied to verify the code, especially if you're going to use it in production. So if you push a button and you say, Boom, print this thing out. Instead yeah. of you writing it all, and it works on the first or second try, that's better than you spending a week writing it, right? Well, perhaps, but you're talking about, I don't want to get into like the, the overall semantics of it, but if I write a basic bit of code that says, okay, give me a three-question query that I could put in sort of a Im embed code yeah. put on a website, that's relatively easy to prove it works or it doesn't. Yeah. You know, it's the, it does or it doesn't. Yeah. If I write a 600-line program, Mm -hmm. And I want to test it out. I might get it right the first time. Yeah, yeah sure. It may not. How yeah. many times do I have to run it to understand that it's actually correct in some sort of verifiable test? Take video creation. Same thing, right? I want I want a video of someone running down the street in June. Now I could go Why hire. Why would you want that? I could go hire. <laughs> if you're much. creatively creating a movie, if you're creating. If I mean, these are things that people are already doing, right? Um, you just type it in, you ask for it, and maybe you have to hit enter six times. You're not doing anything. So the, the amount of productivity that's instead of having to get someone with a boom and a mic and everything else. Yeah. And then similarly, like uh, Tope has AI, which is another version of AI that runs models for image creation and for, for video, uh, digital video production, is basically turning stuff that is VHS quality video using AI into HD video. It's so rough. 
because people want to upscale video or because people need footage that's going to change. People use these tools all the time. They're making tons of money Im embedding them into I understood, tools. but how is that, how is that extend beyond clever? About, about clever? How does it extend beyond clever? Why does it have to? Well, would saving you time, you're saving time. Groundbreaking as AI need to be so groundbreaking that it revolutionized the way you do something as opposed to just. I don't think it would be as big is of a deal if it wasn't or is saving it better. It's better. It's saving people. Some people need to double check, right? You also need to. I wouldn't say some people, but everyone should double check everything that's coming out. But there, are, I think there are applications of it where it's certainly enabling people who didn't have the means to build certain things to build things they weren't able to build before. Well, I think that's a big thing. That's a big opportunity for people. I started this argument, but you're using time as a variable in terms of justifying AI use, and that's how I started it. But if that's the only factor we're talking about, time savings, like it will save time, we're going to yeah. end up theoretically. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'm just going to throw this out there. Yeah, sure. We hit it back. Yeah. We'll end up with progressively inferior shit. Because we'll just Watered down. try to get faster and faster outcomes over time. Eventually, we'll end up with like a gray blob. You, you as a human still need to make a decision of what the product is. So to your point, that's right. your point, right? Is that it takes your intervention that maybe you could have done it on your own. And by the time you've done it on your own, AI hasn't added any value because you've had to double check it a few times, right? All I'm saying is that I think there are tools. And some of the stuff is... Where I, I certainly don't have as much insight, but I read the the Cinderella stories that people are starting to do. This is in drug discovery, is in things that are going to make a real difference, and they're people are trying it out. And you know, I look at all the technologies we've kind of used over the years and been excited about. It takes years for these things to catch on. Sure, this stuff caught on like two hundred days. People are using it, they're blindly implementing it in their enterprises. I mean, this is a, a whole, wild west right it's a now. whole different thing, and so, there's a reason for it. It's not just media hype. Well, there's going to be some results. results. Okay, then I'll, again, I'll stipulate. So let's say it takes 10 years for an AI model to become, I'm just laying out that number, 10 years, Yeah. for AI model to become 90% trustworthy. Sure. Like in the case of um, how they use it to detect tumors nowadays, right? Sure. They started off uh, with, I don't know, 20 million samples. Now they're up to hundreds of millions of samples. So they can reasonably predict when they look at an MRI of a thing that it's something like they, that they can, but they still need a human to verify. Yeah. So in that case, would you agree that if it takes 10 years and after 200 days, we're still only at clever? Or we've. What, when you say clever, what do you mean by that? Can you define a, a that? Par, a parlor trick. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a nice way. Like, again, when I teach my class. Like Google. Like Google. Like I go and I search for Google and I look at, I get a result. And I'm supposed to trust that, right? That's you do, though. Yeah. You do. So, so you why do you? So be, that's my point. Is it because it's it's you're searching Google, you're getting a result on a web page that someone else has written. That's well, not but, AI. But but we were old enough. Yep. In our twenties. Yep. To remember when it, when we were told that you shouldn't trust Google, you right. should Google something trust and then you get the answer. Trust but verify. So, so, it, so I, I guess the only thing I'll say, one last thing I'll say is it's not the last thing I'll say. Google, say more stuff. Google is you're getting a, a source and you don't know how good the source is. AI kind of goes one step be, behind that and says, "Yeah, they're putting it in this pretty package. You're not sure what the source is, and you've got to verify it." Yeah. But you, if you have some background in the area, this looks great. Yeah, so, two seconds and you're done. So instead of instead of having to put it all together yourself. So to the subject matter experts, there's a small advantage to the rest of us idiots. There's uh, an additional layer of work to make GAI. So, yeah, it's so only, this, it's like anything else, it's as much as you put into it. Yeah. So if you don't know how to prompt AI, you're not gonna get a lot of value out of it. All right, well, right? We're, not, we're not sponsored by The Economist, but this is from the uh, <laughs> November 11th issue. Um, by the way, if you can read one of these in a week, you're... Is this The Economist? Yeah. I, I did The Economist. If you can read a single issue in a week, which for me is like literally a very hard challenge. Yep. Um, God bless you. <laughs> I, I'm lucky. It I'm is, lucky. I, 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 can, I can get through like four days. Spring. <laughs> 
So there's an article in The Economist from 2000, uh, from this year, from November 11th. And I'm just going to read a clip. It says, uh, this is about celebrity and AI. Yeah. Others fear that AI will simply make entertainment derivative and boring. That's very nice. Three quarters of Americans tell YouGov that they worry AI will sap human creativity. Again, getting to the lowest common denominator. Mm -hmm. The process of ingesting everything and then spitting out an average may lead to a stylistic and conceptual regression to the mean, says one literary agent who sees similarities with the algorithms on social media to help propagate the most pedestrian views. Mm -hmm. Sir Lucian, I'm not sure who that is, but somebody, some biggie big at Universal. Is that a name or a, a screen yeah. name? S I R oh. Lucian. So, Sir, Lucian, Sir right? Lucian. What's the first and last name? No, like Sir, as in Sir Crispin. So, Sir like Lucian. Lucian, Lucian is Sir the last Lucian. name. Yeah. That's cool. Dude, you gotta, you gotta get some Sirs up in this place. Sir, Sir, Sir Loin? Crispin? Sir Loin. Sir I would be called Sir Loin. <laughs> Dude, again, we're, we're sponsored by a lamp, not Sir Loin. Oh. I love steak. Sir Lucian at Universal has said that AI will always lack the essential spark that drives the most talented artists to do their best work, which is intention. Now, hold on, I'm not done. Everything depends on whether audiences embrace artificial performances. Is the next generation of moviegoers going to want to see a different actor in James Bond as an example? Or are they going to want to see Sean Connery come back? Exactly. That's a rhetorical question, but hold on a second. Ask a Hollywood agent. <laughs> AI-generated performances may prove to be most successful for the biggest stars, whose uncritical superfans cannot get enough of them. As Liam Gallagher, a former Oasis frontman. He left Oasis? Isn't there a digital twin of Liam Gallagher? Did he leave Oasis? Isn't Oasis done? I thought they broke up. I mean, they're brothers. No, Noel's out doing Oh, hello. No. Just Listen, don't destroy this. I, I only have one copy. I got excited when you talk about Oasis. But, well, let me um, finish the fucking word. No, no, I'll, I'll, oh, hold, God, on, hold on. Sorry. As Liam Gallagher, a former Oasis <laughs> frontman, apparently, former, and John Lennon devotee, replied when asked on social media what he thought of the remastered Now and Then. That's John Lennon. Oh, you kidding. Liam said, The Beatles could shit in my handbag. <laughs> 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 and I'd still hide my polo mints in there. So that's right. So exactly. There there's there's uh my take it's, on your whole it's super guy walking down the street video. It's so interesting because I I do wonder look, today absolutely agree. And it, it's 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 early days. I think what people are thinking about is what's if things have changed this so much. So hold on, ten out right there. But when is it not gonna be early days? I think if we take techno, when did ChatGPT come out? December. Who cares? Well, when's the I'm just saying. How that's long does it take out to be early days? Like a year. One year. Yeah, let's say one year. One year. Okay, so we're, so, so we're, we're, we're approaching one year. And it's the biggest thing that we, we can't, people can't stop talking unless we're talking about it now. It's 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 one year in, not even. It'll be a year in a, a few weeks since this kind mm -hmm. of went public outside of IT circles and AI like AI enthusiast circles. Google took six years to be a big deal. I mean, you take these things, and I think over time, when you to, to the entertainment point, um, I don't. I, it's going to be difficult for people to know what's real and what isn't. I think that's the concern I have. It's already happening now. It's, I mean, you can. It's already happening it's, it's, now, I and just, it was happening with um, well, the actors when a CG, it was a big part of it. Yeah, CGI because was kind of like that guy walking down the street's been stolen. That, that AI didn't create that. They it stole it because there are images on the internet and there are videos on the internet. And I, I, I'm am just saying that that's what AI is doing. Is it's just looking at a model yeah. and Clever, pulling this cleverly, stuff down. cleverly put. I like clever. I like clever. I think it, we should do a clever. Just all line. clever things. I I think it's very clever, um, but I do think it's extremely controversial because just like other. I mean, a lot of people are concerned that it's going to put people out of work and whatnot. And, and I think creative industries, I mean, I, I like to write music and create music. Someone's, you, can, you can download an app for 60 bucks and create a chord progression 
and with a good baseline, you can take two different things from two different AIs and put it together and, and ask ChatGPT to write your lyrics. And is that crap? Some people can't even know the difference. If I, if I wrote it, it would be crap. But that, that's my point. It's like over time, no, do it. You could do it. Let's just say you could be a songwriter. But I could also just download like any Pink Floyd MP3, change the name of it, and then put it back out there and see how they move it. Actually, you could sample it like a scooter. Like it was it's like a scooter. I'm listening to a scooter right now on my headphones. I'm like, we just switched to open fold off of this. So, there's a, uh, so but no, I look, I, I think it, I think there is some, I think we're at the top of the hype cycle. Okay, I think listen, we're coming down. I was the slide. wondering when we we're going to let's talk. Let's stop. Where, where, when no, are no, we no, going to no, hit we the trough? We don't, we don't, we well, the trough is regulation. Everyone is scared of, yeah. of, of what this, what's going to happen. But why? There's no reason to be scared. There's literally no reason. It requires human brain. So it's, you're hearing it, it from it, me. I have absolutely no uh, <laughs> PhD I, or or technical background to suggest this, but do not be scared of AI. Stupid. But it's fun. If you ask AI to imagine this scenario, there's uh, no link to the the living world yet, though, where it's controlling the humans. Yet that we know about. That we know about. Exactly. But you see those robots at Boston Scientific. You know the dogs. You know. But dude, those are when, war. Those are war machines. That's not. One AI. of those, those are war machines. Yeah, but one of those is going to start making decisions and you know be linked into that. You know. Oh, my, look at my story. <laughs> Listen, you're using ChatGPT on my network. I am. I'm tracking you now. I put a, I put a cookie on your machine. Did you use ChatGPT or Bard to connect so, your AI? So there's a guy I follow on Hacky Derm, uh, well, actually on, <laughs> on Mastodon called Thomas Fuchs, and he wrote, the non-exhaustive list of things that AI-generated text has made worse. Hey. Oh, I'm just touching Steve's leg. <laughs> well, okay, good. Sorry. What are you doing over there? I, I, I just typed in the chat GPT. What'd you type? Write a 90 day plan for a CIO starting at a 50 person pharmaceutical company. Oh, Mike. Mike, Mike, Mike. I had to beat you after this <laughs> podcast. What did it do? What did it say? It just wrote a book. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Did it copy? It's probably you probably searched through all this stuff with ChatGPT and it's created a book. Yes, I did. It says Nate. Nate says. Yeah. Yep, yep. Calculus of IT. What? Calculus of IT, right here. It's you should get after. So that. basically, Sam Altman. You Mike get has him. Mike has just made moot the rest of the entire podcast season <laughs> in this one one strip stroke. There's no value time. though. This is silly. Uh huh. It's a joke. It was a total joke. Well, let me get back to this. This is interesting. So Thomas Fuchs wrote this list. He says, a non-exhaustive list of things that AI-generated text has made worse. Search results, scientific studies, how-to articles and repair instructions, cooking recipes, yeah. information on poisonous plants and mushrooms, information about disease symptoms, news, marketing copy, customer support replies, product descriptions in online stores, bugs and data corruption, ripping off authors. Then, in terms of the exhaustive list of things AI generated text has made better, nothing. <laughs> ah. This is something that's gonna. I mean, it's. I don't. How, the lawyers must be psyched. Oh, right? so I was at I was at a um, thing in, at uh, DC this, Law about a month ago. Yeah, this is crazy. And it was um, AI and IP. Uh -huh. It was a full day event. That's Actually, right. You told me. Yeah, yeah, and it was. Uh, they were actually asking great questions because it wasn't so much about you know whether or not this lyric or that song chord or whatever is. It's more about like what happens if we write something or someone makes a piece of software mm -hmm. and AI gets a hold of it, yeah, and and proliferates it, and it can massage it and change it so you don't know it took your stuff. And that's where and just being like. A, not a lawyer, but B, a technologist sitting in that room listening to them debate this from and listening to lawyers' perspectives, that's when I was like, okay, first of all, holy crap, this is way bigger than the news media. Because like the news media has just lost its mind. Yeah. They they have they have no concept of this. Uh, I read the other day someone quoted AI as in a distortion pipeline. Mm -hmm. Which makes perfect sense to me. Um, on on LinkedIn, 
It makes what does 60 that mean? minutes. It's storage from the hydro. That and, means that uh, you can write AI in the title of an article, then write any made up bullshit right. you want. It'll get and, clicks. And it will get tons of clicks. <laughs> so on LinkedIn, as of about noon today, um, I looked up AI groups. The top two artificial intelligence had 2.1 million members, and artificial intelligence deep engineering had 1.2 million members. When I clicked into those two links, they were just those two groups. All they were was reposts of mm -hmm. like this Reuters crap about unverifiable AI FUD. Yep. And those are the two biggest AI groups on LinkedIn. So today. FUD in terms of it's the end of the world type yeah. stuff. So yeah. for, for our listeners who don't know what FUD is, it's fear, uncertainty, and doubt. It's how you sell uh, news on the internet to clickbait. And if you read an article about AI, there's a 99.100% chance it's fun right now. So yeah, I agree. Just take a pause on your AI news for now. Focus on some bigger issues. Um, but I will talk about two other AI things because I'm not done. And these are things that aren't part of this social zeitgeist. One is the release of Gauss by Samsung. Okay. Yeah. Which is the fourth major engine to come into the market. S24, big time. Followed by our fifth engine to enter the market. Amazon? No. Q? No. Grok? Grok. Well, Q was announced yesterday, but Grok is. But Q is, a, from what I understand, a small. It's more enterprise company. focused. Yes. Yep. Grok is going to take the entire bombastic pile of turds that Twitter is and make it as its LLM. Mm -hmm. And then you can It's going to analyze every tweet I've been told, I've, I've read. Oh, anyway. boy. Yeah. And That's somehow make a profit. I'm yeah. sure. Somehow make a profit. And there'll be 10 more after that. Yes. There's, a, there's an article in... It's I'm a not going to go I'm not going to go through the whole article, but basically there was an article. You should read it if you're out there. It was in it was an op-ed in the New York Times from November 21st about the open AI coup, <laughs> about the big three all turning for profit, even though open AI was supposed to be not for profit. It's now for profit, which means that of yeah, that's why the, Elon left the top three engines uh, out there today, all of them are for profit. There's no nonprofit AI. I don't know if we talked about this last time, but we may have talked about it over a beer at, uh, where's that place in Wayland on the lake with the burgers? I'm talking about. Anyway. The, the, about, the, the something house? I, the Chevalier house? <laughs> with <laughs> oh, I want to give them a little shout out, and I can't remember it because of the Centauri. Um, it was a something house. Yeah, the chateau. The, the chateau. Chateau. Which is a house in French. Oh, I love that. Or maybe yeah. a mansion. Yes. The chateau is great. Great place. Anyway, uh, I forgot what I was saying. I think what I was what you and I were talking about was just the need for a lot of this stuff to be open source. Like that and I know that um, some will release it open source, but it's only as good as knowing what to do with it. But I think some of the stuff, if it stays in a closed very closed model. It's it's scary. Um, and is I it think the bias that you're worried about? Like, is there a certain I think just the L slant, the, L the LLM model. Some some respect is just people. Someone being able to look at the actual code is important. Uh, same with cybersecurity. Like password managers, like open, like that's a little futuristic thing too. Like having open source password manager. Big believer in that. Um, but the whole the whole idea is just. This code can be used and reused and freely available to people who want to use it, hopefully well, for like, good like and maybe Blum. for bad. I mean, it's a scary. All this stuff can be used for bad. That was the point behind the model two distribution, right? Was yep. that it was supposed to be? Oh, sorry. How, we don't know how we got this got out there. And you see someone like Google who gets all this bad press about, you know, don't be evil and what they've done with Gmail data and other stuff, and they're the ones that have probably the most restrictive model in Bard. Like that, that's probably the most restrictive. Yeah, Bard is another story. Ch chat bot, but Grok will be interesting. It's open sourced. It's gonna 
I don't think it's just going to be X or Twitter that it's it's feeding off of. I think it's going to be interesting to see. It's open source for now. And so you need to yep. buy the little blue star that goes with your account name. <laughs> you do need to buy it, but it's you can still if you can. That's what I mean, Mike, by knowing what to do with it. Yeah. And Meta, who is everyone's friend, right? All of their stuff is open source. Every single model is open source. That's because they already own you. They That's own right. your car, your house. So does, so does any AI devices. that you type all your stuff into someday. Yeah. So, by the way, inevitable. Are, do you either use, use Zapier? I do. Oh, I love it. Plug for Zapier, not a sponsor. Oh, yeah. Lamp is our sponsor. Love Zapier, though. Zapier, have you seen the new homepage recently? I have not. So log into your account, go to the front page of Zapier, and it's now right in plain English what you want to do. It's pretty it's sweet. Uh, all right. Fine. Listen, AI is wonderful, but there's a thousand AI it's, podcasts. Yep, there's too many. You have so many. I'm tired of talking about it. Zapier rules. So, one, I have a couple other quick topics. Sure. Uh, and Steve, I'm glad you're here because SSO tax. SSO tax. This bullshit. Okay, so can you bring us up to speed or you want me to sort of cover that? Like, what's happening with, you know, we always know that SSO has been a problem. Especially if you are like an Okta user, because you go to a, you have like four licenses for some Mickey Dink website. In order to get the uh, SAML plugin, it's like an additional four thousand dollars. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Enterprise to enable that. Yeah, that's that a, that's, a, that's a sort of shaming. To, not, to get an engineer to help. To get an engineer. Buy the admin tools. The admin tools <laughs> to hook it up. <laughs> right. And it's like, boop, yeah. your SAML enabled. It's like cut and paste. Right click, next, yeah. next, finish. Oh my gosh. It's that easy. Yeah, CSO uh, Magazine had this article came out on November 21st called The SSO Tax is Killing Trust in the Security Industry. Now, that's straight up FUD music right there. Remember, be your uncertain need out. But there's some there's some nuggets in this article. Did you happen to read this article? I skimmed through it. Do you have thoughts on it? Uh, the, the, the token transparency and, and what they're actually doing with it was, was kind of interesting. You might want to touch on that. Well, I mean, basically what they're, so if you use SSO to authenticate to an application, a SaaS app out there, uh, have you ever asked the question of the vendor, the SaaS vendor, how they are in fact setting up their SSO? Like, <laughs> have you ever asked that question? Because, because until I read this article, I was like, you make an assumption. Yeah, right. like, yeah. well, like it's a, why wouldn't they? Like, of course, but now, of course, I feel like I can ask because I've never actually asked that question. Mm. So what this article does is goes into detail, and it was in CSO Magazine or CSO Online, but I'm not going to read the whole article. There's one point that says, um, the research suggests that there is a huge failure and again, they don't really have the detail on what the research is, so you know, keep that in mind. Research suggests that there's a huge failure by application providers regarding the enforcement of session limitations defined by SSO providers. While SSO providers can set restrictions on token usage, it ultimately depends on the application provider to implement and enforce those limitations within an application. So we think that we're doing it through our SSO platforms but in truth it can supersede ours like third party risk yeah yeah and so they go on to say we did some random testing again there's no data in this article to support this but we did some random testing and found disturbing answers there's fud probably true they were all over the place their words not mine hyperbole we also learned that there have been quite a few studies over the years documenting that many applications incorrectly configure session tokens by failing to enforce expiration. Mm -hmm. Properly Microsoft. validate authentication tokens, terminate sessions when users log out, or implement or validate binding. Now, oh, I'm not done, because it gets, it gets juicy. So here's how single sign-on sessions are being compromised. And they're gonna give you five examples. One, phishing. Attackers create fraudulent websites or emails that mimic legitimate login pages, so min yeah. middle attacks tricking users to enter their credentials, including their authentication tokens. Yep. Evil Genix 2 is one commonly used tool for this attack. We know about that. Mm -hmm. Malware, malicious info stealer software can be installed on a user's device to steal their authentication tokens. 
Um, I mean, if you that, that's in, in Bush dealers like pretty, pretty easy yeah. to block out. Session hijacking, side channel attacks, and then lastly, when your SSO provider has compromised the web. Yeah. And we all know yeah, one sure. SSO provider. Recently, yeah, we were yeah. in the news today. Actually, it hasn't had the best run of luck. <clears throat> yeah, although I understand. Yeah, I th I think um, two two things. Well, one thing is I think this makes a case for the need for a secure browser. The secure browser model that, that wipes out tokens, that wipes out sessions, that monitors that type of thing. Where it doesn't help is is helping to explain. I think to People in that, you know, as we're implementing a certain identity provider today, um, they need to log in a little more, or we need to get some biometrics. We need to have something that kills the session. So Microsoft looks for that. If you don't, not, if you don't change in PowerShell the session timeout, because by the way, we're, we're not sponsored by Microsoft. I thought they were sending us millions. They, didn't they send us some uh, apples or something? No, no. no. Um, Talk by Lamp. So. Lamp, Lamp keep, sent the, keep the Microsoft fanboy. <laughs> all I'm saying is that it's logged in all the time unless you change the settings to PowerShell, and I think that there's a um, that session token can be hijacked. Similarly, with our favorite IDPs that are out there, yeah. they, they they the same. Wasn't thing there an happen. exploit at DEF CON this year about? It's, it's taking that session control over from Microsoft on X yep. free sessions. The same can Just happen. With it. It. The same can happen with any of the other platforms. I mean, the same thing can happen. It all lives in the browser. And if you're compromised with a phishing message, or you don't have a like Chrome is just going to protect that and keep it there. When, whenever you're just sitting there, same with Edge and others. If you've got something that's going to dump out the cache, and then you're going to have a bad user experience. But that's that's the trade-off, and I think if there needs to be a few more of these events where you can, when you're talking to your leadership team or your audit committee or whatnot, like session-based attacks, it's it's probably going to become bigger than ransomware because this stuff is getting easier to do, and no one knows why. Hey, I got MFA set up. I'm good, right? Well, well no, okay. they're hijacking my session tool. Let's, let's ask the CISO here, and before you answer this question, let me just respond in general. Which is that between Chrome and Bing, which now both have fly by, fly by extensions, yeah, or Edge, rather, the same, yeah, the same. which have fly by extension enabling. So just keep adding extensions as you go. Um, when you think about what he just said with regards to secure browser and intermittent sessions, how also are you thinking about um, extensions and plugins? In, in terms of like enforcing it, or, like, or like, yeah, I mean, so so or don't, don't have to give me it or yeah, allowing the, like allowing the user just what's your ideal? Oh God! Right now, it's it's kind of fair game. Right now, that's why um, you need a secure, like an island IO or a Talon. Yeah. yeah. It, it, by the way, we're not sponsored by Island IO or Talon. We're not, but they have great products, both of them. Oh, I'm just you. personally. What is your name dropping? Is that? Do you have talent on your vest over there? No, I don't. I don't. All I'm saying is that that's that's. I'm kidding. You can use Edge and Intune. No, you can't. You can to control plugins. You can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can restrict what okay, plugins you can should. I did not know that. Yeah, you, you can. I did not I know. know you that. can also use, you can also use Chrome Mini. But people are going to open Chrome, and that's where I think you need like a, you need like. Um, the only two I know of are Talon and I, Island I.O., where it's like you build your own policies and it's set, it's outside of the Microsoft bubble and they fully integrate with Okta. So yeah. it's nice to have, and um, Talon actually is plugged in and partnered closely with CrowdStrike, I believe. So it's like this great integration from a cybersecurity perspective and it just looks like Chrome. So people don't even know. It's a Chrome engine. And uh, one of the things I think is really cool about it is like if you're a Zscaler customer or a Palo Alto customer. What you name dropping over here? I'm just talking about the tools that we use. So like, like for for web filtering, right? Okay. That's a big. I know you're just giving me shit. Um, but if you're using a tool to do web filtering or anything like that, you're often like, oh 
issue, like I'm in a Z scale or something else, and I'm passing someone to an on demand VPN and it's slowing down performance and everything sucks. If you get into that secure browser model, um, you can get maybe 50 to 60% of the way there because being in the industry where we still have labs and we still yeah. have thick client applications. But the more you move people to the browser, I think the more you're able to utilize this model and get rid of the session issue because they're going to log in easily to the enterprise browser that's going to recreate the session when they go to Outlook, when they go to Teams or favorite applications or to Slack or to others where there are Slack creates an infinite session token too. Yeah. So it's like these things where it's like you need to have that, that, that box around everything. I think the browser is the answer. I want to hear what I want to hear what the CISO has to say. No, I hear I hear and appreciate sure. everything you're saying. Oh, sure, sure, yeah, sure. So when you say I'm curious about the secure browser world, sure. can you explain that a little bit more yeah. from how a user would see it? Yeah, you know the, the end user sure. and and what their experience would be like, and then come on top of that of what you know what what your sysadmin is looking at. Exactly. And yeah. No, happy to talk about it. So. The user logs in, and let's take uh, Island IO for example. Uh, when they log, when the, if you're an Okta customer with Island IO, so I'm not familiar with that. So it's just, it, all Island IO and Talon are two Chromium-based browsers that have a full management model um, and interface for you to manage these browsers. Right. right. Um, when you log in, Island IO is the one I know better. Um, but when you log into Island IO, there's an integration with Okta. So when they log in, they get all their apps on a local page. Right. So they get all their apps. Their experience oftentimes is, I need the internet to launch or some sort of landing page. Uh, I want access to all my applications. Everything's going to work. So all our scientific applications and our GNA applications. Internal, work. external, SaaS. I guess the short answer brick is. Brick and mortar. The short all answer of that? is, if you do it well, they don't even know. Okay. So they, they, they have no, it looks like. Chrome, I have Chrome open right now on my laptop. That's what it looks like to them. And because Chromium kind of underneath is an open source platform, all of the all the bookmarks and everything else that comes in, they don't even know the difference. So you can brand it based on your company's colors. You put the logo in there so they make sure they're not in the right the, in the wrong place. And I think a lot of these companies in the future, though I'm not sure, they are seeing the opportunity to get into the local game where they may have an agent that will allow you to kind of force people into the browser. So Intune can do this. Um, you know, if you're using like a, um, like a, if you're on the Mac using Kanji or other tools that are kind of based on having the, that local local agent on the machine, it'll force them into the Chromium browser or the browser of your choice. So the, the flip side of this is that Google or Microsoft or Amazon could just do this on their own. And it surprises me that Edge and Chrome haven't pushed this kind of model on people as maybe it's a premium feature or whatnot that says, hey, look, I'm going to put a whitelist in. I'm going to do a anal analysis on bad sites, and I'm going to block all those sites by default. That sounds like the CASB it's for a, the browser. It's a, it's a firewall. It's basically a firewall in the browser, and that's all it is. And it's a great it's a great concept. Um, I know a couple people who have implemented it, um, and when I was leaving my last company, we What's were working the overhead on then? Like, going from Overhead. Well, the way I came from it is in my previous world. Um, you know, we had a like. Is it barely together and a bunch of different things no, need to one work app. work together to one application, one login, um, one place with a set. It's like a firewall with rules that are um, based on priority, um, similar to what you see in um, like uh, Google Google Workspace uh, with Chrome administration. All right, you, yeah. you, you're familiar with that. Yep. Um, it's very similar to that, where you're able to set certain settings like restricting plugins, restricting uh, what the home page is. Basically, you can do that in Intune as well with Edge. But having the having the flexibility of the user experience, but being able to do that without being tied to Intune or to something else. Um, one other thing I'll just say it is it would like, be its own ecosystem. Then. It's its own tool, and it's great for contractors because you can just give them this as a secure it's browser. And they're in without a VPN. That's a, it's a pretty interesting thing. So, 
I get excited about this. Like, sorry, I get kind no, of chatty about this stuff. Michael, you can talk about this all <laughs> night. I'm sorry, very, like I'm you can just very passionate about the podcast. Browsers. Just fast forward this whole fucking section. You just cut it all out. No, I'm not cutting it out. <laughs> no, it's, I'm just kidding. It's, it's, that, no, it's an interesting. But, but what you're concept. doing is what we already did. This is you're, you're talking. You're taking 2005 <laughs> concepts and mm -hmm. ideas and applying them to 2023, 24. Yeah, technology. Just like with and like, we're, we're like just slash go, dot and dig. We're gonna come back to the point where people are saying, I can't get to this website, and you go to that website, and you have a somebody who's sitting there in a little room adding plus or minuses to the allow or deny lists, and you're yeah. I mean, it's just like Zscale or other tools where you've got that web filtering to protect you from ransomware and all that's why I want this guy <laughs> yeah, I, to tell us why compliance and risk are important here because totally important. That's you want to start creating lists. That's exactly what you're saying. You're creating uh, I'm profiles not a, I'm not and lists. Company do it. Well, I'm not a, a huge backer of that draconian approach. It just is, you know what I mean. So you're going to tell us about like I really want to understand before we regress back to 2005 firewall rules and hiring to having to hire somebody who spends all day managing. Allow and deny lists. What's the take on risk compliance for that kind of company or any company? Uh, the take. What do you mean? <laughs> so, so you're you're an N of six. Yeah. I'm an N of two. Mike's an N of one. Uh, we want to create a secure browsing environment. Right. We want to do so because we have uh, aud SEC auditors. Mm -hmm. We have. Um, uh, SOX auditors. Mm -hmm. We want to demonstrate that our world is secure. We have ERM in place. We have other kinds of internal governance models in place for security to make sure our world is safe. Where does browser security and control fit into that? And how far do we want to go back? How far are you going back? I don't know. I mean, is it following the same model as, as kind of like antivirus? So you had your antivirus and then you had your EDR tools and then you got your XDR tools and even those are out of date. Like, I don't, I don't well, know. Yeah, I, don't, I, mean, I don't have the answer to that because I think you're sort of chasing your tail because what are you going to do for the next thing? That's, you know? So, so Mike, I, I think that's the basic question. Yeah. The basic question will be, where do you draw the line? Like, I get it. I'm not, there's a new functionality. There's going to be a new hole. My my, right? my my original question was in terms of the browsers. See, I, yeah. I, whether 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 you're a Chrome company or your Edge or whatever it is you're using, you know. Where, I don't even know the difference. I have no clue. Yeah, they're both running on Chromium. Uh, it's just Firefox. The point is that like the user is going to find a way. Sure. Or the data is going to find a way. In, in 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 these browsers, when you open Okta, let's say, which is Okta is an example. By the way, that's a, a hundred software vendor plugs for Mike. He just said a hundred. <laughs> well, I like Okta too. I like all. I like everything. I'm going to plug a vendor into mobile. It's, so all I'm saying is that just one in, though, not hundred. In any one of these secure browser products, if you log in, I'm going to say Okta. If yeah. you log into Okta, OKTA OKTA. if you log into Okta and you're not in the enterprise secure browser, yep. there's a lock on your iPhone. Sure. And you can't open it. Yep. So if if I don't care if you use Chrome or Firefox or Edge on your computer, you can't work. You can go search for the web, you can go to Hotmail, you can do whatever you want. It's cool. Hotmail. You just use that. You know who Tor uses Hotmail? Thank you. Right Nin here. Nineteen ninety. The last Hotmail user on the planet. I got it when it was HTML. There, there's a, there's a yeah, guy. I used Hotmail back Thank in ninety nine. There's you. a poor, there's a poor bastard sitting in a closet somewhere in California who's like, I hope he doesn't log in again. Oh shit, he just logged in again. Every I gotta day. keep gotta keep working. The struggle with like getting like contractors and others, making sure they're at, you know people that are outside the company. Even people who might be partners and they're not contractors, I can send them a browser, and if they're if they're say so, let them install the browser. Um, 
they have access to our stuff. And we have a, we have an end to end control of the access because they have which our is, system, which is different from say inviting them to a VBR hack. How is that different from a VPN environment and just getting them right. in there? Right. I'm not no one I'm not giving someone a VPN like, look connect at, we're, 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 all we're their picking on you, but we're not picking on you. No, no, no. I'm just saying, like I would never give an external provider. I wrote a VPN. right here in my paper, you can see it. Secure browser Chrome discussions is we're gonna have that next next time. We should bring we should bring a whole group we should do a live version, like we go live. Like with live chat messages. And you just get shit we can control you. <laughs> I love it. I'm so much fun. Like we should just great. get a bunch of like baseballs up on the table and just throw them at each other. Every time no, I, I'm, with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I hear you. Um. Okay. No, that, that that's. A, I think it's an interesting thing, and I, I, I have a few peers that are really excited about it too, and we've already, we've already excited seen the results. About what? Secure browser. Okay. Is it there yet, though, or is it? It's pretty much there. Mm, if you're a Google I, Workspace environment, by the way, and there is a plug from me, Google Workspace environment, then yes, we already have it. But yeah. Um, and it, then how is that different from like the VDI environment? You can build the VDI environment in in the browser. Okay. Right. Oh so God. so if you've got if you've got um, like um, what is it called Microsoft's uh, Azure Workspaces or um, another vendor from like. <laughs> just, just giving you exa- I don't know how to just describe. Keep going on platforms. I don't know how to describe these things. We should list. We should have an episode where all right, you all right, fine. every platform. I use an open internet. source one. Guacamole. <laughs> okay, guacamole. You got a guacamole interface to a, a Dude, open source Linux desktop. Um, you you can pull that through any browser, right? So if you can secure the browser, then you've got a nice VDI experience for people, and you can go full screen, and you can do that. VDI is still a challenge. VDI was awesome in 2006. But that's right, because I, I, I agree. Next I think, stop. Next stop, baby. So look at Outlook. Outlook. No, I don't look at Outlook. So new Outlook, right? New Outlook is web-based. Hey, yeah. Uh, so by the way. The biggest the biggest right, okay. client-server mess in history. Before you, I'm going to stop you Outlook. right there. So for listeners, for the, for the listener, <laughs> mom, listen, uh, you know, I have no idea what I'm talking about at the moment, but. When Office stops being native and goes fully online, mm-hmm. the collective world is going to lose its mind. Yes, and um, and so I agree. When when I want to be still having this podcast when that moment happens, whenever it is, like mid twenty five. It's a year, yeah. Because I I want to make sure that we cover that in detail. Why Why do you even get that? Why? I've already got people on because it's already happening. Yeah, switching people to Outlook One. I'm already they're, trying to do they're, it. They're moving. Well, we're, listen. It's been pretty don't, seamless. Don't, don't, don't be. Okay. We're push, gonna have. We're gonna have you back. back. Push back. We're gonna have you back for that podcast. <laughs> when when so you have to, when hotmail. you can only use Word online, we'll being, have you back. Being hotmail boy, I've been like the last six years. Yeah, hotmail boy. You That's how I get boy. my office instance. <laughs> you submitted to all. Well, it's my mom, anyway. <laughs> you use Hotmail. Yeah. Nothing wrong with Hotmail. It's Office Online. It's I know office. No, 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 no hate. No hate. You got access to the Office Suite. No Free. In one terabyte of storage. Yeah. I love my. I love getting ads when I get my email. Um, anyway. Well, G- you want to know what? You, you, there's the ad blocker extension that you put on a Chrome. Not for there long. You go. Not for long. That's another. It'll point. block YouTube on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh this my is God. good, man. Keep it going. Yeah, we'll keep it going, all right. Um, <laughs> well, I was going to talk about e signatures tonight. Oh, do we have everyone's... do we have the bandwidth for e signatures discussion? Or are you guys totally taxed out? I can, I can e signatures. It yeah. depends on the the subject matter. Well, well, it basically <laughs> sounds like a really compelling topic. <laughs> what I wanted to talk about was not. How good they are, mm-hmm. or the validity, or the use case, but more along the lines of um, how we're trending towards it being the thing that's inclusive in platforms as a default. So let me make my case, and then you can tell me I'm an idiot. Um, so we know Box is Box Hub. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, there's another vendor that's in a, a competitor of Box in the Office of Sun Signature token product. Um, well, actually, there's two competitors. Dropbox Box. has one too. Michael. Oh, that's 
Bender, whatever number. <laughs> We're not allowed to say Bender names? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. Just say all the vendors. I told you, say all the vendors. Send me right. some t-shirts. Come Bring on. Out, yeah, send my all your t-shirts. I only wear black t-shirts. That's all I wear, so I will never wear them. So I'll put them up on yes, the wall. Yes, that was one vendor. There's another vendor. I know the other one. Yeah. Okay. I won't say That's it. coming out with a signature product. Yeah. And the point is that the CWP model, like, so like five years ago, uh, when you were a SaaS vendor, uh, the thing was you had to have API. An open API or yeah. some API. Now it's like a good API. Yeah, yeah. Right. Then it became you had to have some sort of like CWP model. Like you had to have a workflow, like basic workflow and automation in order to be competitive. Maybe like three years ago. Mm -hmm. And now the thing is becoming that you have to have a signature outcome. Like you have to be able to either integrate with a signature platform that will automatically go ahead and let you do e uh, or you have I, to have a built in. I'm not sold on it. I I'm not sold on it. Okay. Well, so my perspective is. If we're moving in that direction, the point of using Adobe Sign, and I'm going to go ahead and say that vendor, and, and, and or DocuSign, it's fine. or whatever sign, Panda Sign. Panda Sign, I like that. Yeah. Is that a new one? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the real one? Is it? I've never heard of Panda Sign. Can I Google this? Oh, yeah. wait. Am I allowed to use Google on your network? Yes. For all those SaaS apps, though, that's not their core competence. Really. No. And then hello, with hello APIs sign. being what it is, what's panda the docs, Mike. It's a picture of a panda on a sign. All right, panda, panda docs. For real? That's no, a real that, thing? That's a panda. Face of the giant panda, it says. All right. All right, panda docs. Oh, there it is. Okay, panda doc. Got it. Got okay. it. Got it. So, I'm in. Can we get back on topic? Well, I'm on topic. This is a, a signature platform, right? Yes, they have signatures. The point is it. that I'm not sold on it. What? I haven't even said what the no, is. No, I'm not sold, sold on, on what? what? You're not sold on anything. All right. Go what on. are you sold on? No. What are you sold on? Go ahead. No, well, come with come, all, come, these come what all these SaaS apps. Come what you're sold on. Come in, I'm not sold on all these apps coming out with their. What are you sold indi on? Industry leaders that focus on that. Na namely. Well, I'm not going to. Like everybody like this. No, guy. he already listened <laughs> to every vendor on the talk, market. Talk about who you Just love. go ahead and send any vendor your name. I'm well, an your open book. Your DocuSigns, your Echo, or your Adobe Signs. Yeah, you sure. Echo signs? I, I did. Dating myself, I know. What? No, I'm just saying, I agree. Like, yeah, the second he says something, you get on his side. <laughs> Listen, I like DocuSign. I like Echo, <laughs> Echo Sign as part of Adobe, right? Now, right? Oh, there's no Echo Sign anymore. It's Adobe Sign. Adobe Sign. Here's the thing, regardless of the product, the biggest thing for me is that when someone signs a document, that it lives where they work. You know, I still haven't asked my question. But keep going. Go, no, you <laughs> finish it. No, no, keep going. He, he has something he likes over here. Go ahead. What do you like? You like Adobe Sign? You like DocuSign? I like, I like the core competency residing within that, within that organization. The trust. I, I think I think everything it's it's. But when the so I mean I'm just gonna ask you a question. It's just an add-on. I I just don't believe they're paying attention to it. I just one thing really well, right? Yeah, they're it's, focused. It, it's not it's not their core competency. So, then would you say? And in the life science environment, where you validated your e-signature tools and you yep. had SOPs and all that other stuff. Yep. You know. Yeah, you want that that trust. Look at you, just agreeing. And no, I'm not. There's, there's a lot of validity to what he's saying. I, Thank you. Yeah, hold on a second. So, I didn't have much to add. All right. AI, so hold on this. a second, though. So if uh, if you have uh, one of your favorite, which you've already yeah. dropped the names of uh, e-sign vendors, and they're Let's storing put on our signatures. In I, I actually box, do baby. want to hear your story. And you're and you're yeah, okay. So here, I'm coming to it because I finally get a chance to talk. You're. <laughs> And, and just ah. nod, nod my head at both of what you're saying uh, all night. You so cycle our whiskey with something. When a me. vendor, when you're using one of these vendors and you do a document and it's saved in the vendor's world, okay? Mm, I know you're going. Yeah, I do too. And you have a copy in your email, which yeah. is where it came. Yes. Which one are you, like, how are you Which is the source of truth? How, no. how are you going to make sure it deletes that itself. document? Yeah. yeah. And that's my only issue with DocuSign is that all of a sudden, 
if there's a DocuSign breach, all this, all this stuff is there and everyone's forgotten about DocuSign. <laughs> and that's where, like, if, as long as if the signature, and this is why, I mean, it's inevitable that Microsoft will do this and probably uh, Google. And that's why you saw Dropbox and Box and others. They're all doing this because they get it. Like, look, if I sign a document and it lives in my workflow as a source of truth, less risk. If it lives in this cloud over here somewhere that no one even keeps a track of and understands, and I screw up the authentication, someone leaves the company and has access to all my contracts. Oh, you're getting close to the end. Uh, it's just like it's you need to integrate it and when better, you, better. When you say workflow, where where so, internal workflow, internal to an organization, internal to an organization, okay. in, into your own workflow. Like let's say I need a document signed. And it's a key document for the organization. Maybe it's a supplier document or something. Keep going. I send it out through DocuSign. I get it signed. Yay, it's signed. It's great. It's taken me three months to get this effing thing done. It's finally signed off. It sits out in DocuSign out here. I download it to OneDrive or Box or SharePoint or Viva or whatever you're using. It's all coming down. Another dropping, vendor. Dropping ding, ding, ding. Drop, dropping vendors. Another vendor. Uh, I'm going to buy one of those little tiny like uh, uh, vendors. Uh, those Vivo hotel the checkers. Yep. So, so we're, 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 we're downloading it wherever it is. Right? Every vendor guess, guess, guess what, on the whatever, internet. Guess who everyone forgets about down the line. I don't oh, think there's, there's a copy in, drop, in DocuSign. There's a copy in EchoSign. Thank or you. In Adobe. And there's Oops, no more EchoSign. It's Adobe Sign. Adobe sign. Thank you. And there's a copy there. And what do you do with it? You forget about it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and that, that's my concern, is that someone's going to manage that and be accountable for it. And that's hard to do because it, it, people think of it as just a signature tool. but And it stores data. You say you've got, okay, so you say you've got to and somebody should. What about you? You actually made me manage this, and I remember having to go in and manually you know, clean out that. I stuff. do make you manage yeah. it because it's a I problem. I do remember that, and I people still are talking that. about it. So I do there's, remember there's that. Got expiry policies or something in there, though. There's got to be something. Expiry policies? Did like, you have work? What was the last time bulk, you in bulk of, management of, tools yeah. in there? But um, yeah, what was the last time you looked inside of? Um, one but of to your point, there is, no, there is no expert. Like retention policy type thing that shuts things down. Yeah. And then are you, is it retention policy? Are you, are you asking or are you saying that there is? Because there isn't. I, no, I, there I is don't. I, yeah. Yeah. It's in perpetuity. And that is a risk. Yeah, it's a risk. I agree. It's a risk, too, when that person who did this signature didn't take the document and put it in their place where they're supposed to put it. So, <laughs> so It's kind of a hidden... It's you know it's, it's something people don't think about. It's, this is another document. But you know location. where you got to go to get it if you need it. So I'm yep. going to come back. Good and point. Point. If, if, very good point. If the account is still active. Yeah, but the account's federated through Okta. And I'm ding ding ding. Right, there's another vendor. If the account's federated, I terminate Michael because he continues to get free stuff from vendors at work. I don't. I don't get anything. And I terminate him. And he's got a thousand <laughs> documents in DocuSign. If the account's terminated, which means the account's terminated in DocuSign. You do a transfer to the service account. Before you yeah. cut his Okta account? De delegated envelopes. So in your termination yeah. workflow, you have so check DocuSign as your first step. Yeah. So Not you my first step, but for the people doing the uh, deprovisioning, yeah. So that's you, your IT. Yeah. It's so just another place where data can live. That's, okay. that's, so my question is, what are you doing about that? Moving the signature. What are you doing? It's a manual okay. management process. So nothing. So it, when you get rid of, when you're recouping licenses and you're cleaning out your stuff, you're transferring. To but but you're not recouping account. licenses because when you you deprovision that user in Okta mm -hmm. or your SSO tool, it killed them in DocuSign. So you lost the document. The account is still there in DocuSign. It's, no no no, it's not the way it works. It's no matter what you do in Okta, it deprovisioned them. In oh, it must, if you have yeah. Yeah, 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 I, I, I would agree. So, yeah. so why isn't again building this out to to you two in terms of your termination process? Why wouldn't that be at the top of your list? And this it's, is what is think think a thousand what? things that require in termination, and but I think about this in terms if, of like why isn't checking that first? I think if it's if it's tied in with a certain identity provider, um, 
I'm just saying it. I'm tired of this. Uh, if it's an attorney with Okta or with it. Azure AD or with Ping well, Identity that or whatever. Or, or John, one login. Jump no, no. Up. Jump jump we're we're, we're going to be sponsored by them. some of them. Um, someday, maybe, maybe. And we can get another bottle of whiskey. You stop saying all the names. <laughs> um, let's just say this. If, if, you, if you're terminating that access at the identity provider, then they can't get to it anymore. Now, it still lives out there. It does they not. Get, if, you, if you choose not if to deprovision, yeah, the but then you're wasting lives. license cost. I, I agree with you. No, I hear you. But so if you're at the luxury of being an organization where you can make that change, embedding it into a file, into in whichever file system you're using, if they provide a signature option, yeah. and you can part 11, uh, you can validate it and qualify it, then that's a great thing to do. How is it any different than doing it from Bob? Because you have to transfer well, that's, it and you want to transfer it. Because every, you want to uh, keep all the permissions and the sharing using the Bosch way you want Using the example, it. if I terminate you, 100% of the things that you have sent out for signature and signed are still like when you terminate somebody inside yeah. a box, you have to transfer that person's account to somebody else right away. Yeah. Everything yeah. That you've ever signed and yeah. done is still preserved. And the assumption is if you're yeah. using box, you're using it for more than just signatures. So people are going to actually see yes. the files. They're yeah. actually going to know they're there when you so transfer there, that. I think it's transfer business continuity. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. business so that's why it's like it's never Microsoft and others like so it signs in one drive, then you have the same argument that like the, the documents are going to live with their sign and right now they're they're not there's they're signed something docusign or adobe they're in the adobe so, so the general the general question about you is, is it a is it a cleanup question that you got just so like the, a the question the question was basically just if you have to terminate if you if you have if you're using a signature platforms today in your company and you have to terminate somebody or whatever you have to do to a person's account how are you take how are you getting control of that data? Like what are you doing for e-signature documents? Because you have a platform and well, you have the ease, the ease and That's comfort sort of thing you can do. I we think. could talk about let's just let's use so I'll use Conga. Which, oh boy, Conga. Yeah. Ding ding ding. Another vendor in Conga. Conga socks. Where for, the, for right here. you know, there's an API integration yep. with, with DocuSign. Yep. That contract stays in Conga, so if it's DocuSign does the e -save. Conga's got its own storage, by the way. Yeah, it's not it, your, it's not it, your central repository that's of a, data. But that's a good model if you if you if you're using it just. But for it's that. within your application. So long as you keep using Conga. So well, again, that's a good point. Same principle. But you could still. But so you move out of Conga, you take your data, and you still have Oh, you have take your data out of Conga. Is that what you do? Sure. Why not? It's all PDFs. All right. I disagree with that statement too. Okay. I disagree with it only because it's not just simple as exporting everything that Mike ever did, every contract Mike ever signed, and the workflows that go along with it because they, they no longer exist and the Mike is no, Mike is no longer using it. And is there document ownership in Conga or is it just built into the database? It's, in the, it's, in the, it's within the database. It's Conga. Database. It's in the yeah. database. Yeah. It's in the database. But we can go through every and single lives CLMS on. vendor one by one and go through this discussion. My point was not about the CLMS vendors, it was about e in general. How, how do you retain the documents today? Like, what, what, essentially, what is the ideal? Yeah, I, I, I think to what, what you were asking, Steve, right about like, is this a management question? Like, if, if you're in, if you're in, a, if you're in, if you're using DocuSign or HelloSign or like any of these, like, there's best of breed for signatures, and the data lives with them, then someone's got to manage that. If it's going to pass on the document to Box or to Conga or to Microsoft SharePoint for integrations or whatnot, then you've got to manage that source of truth. But it's just another thing you've got to manage if you don't have a signature solution that integrates with your core like content management system. So you've got to, you could use DocuSign to do that, I'm sure, through integrations and right. APIs. You can make sure that all signatures write to your home folder or to some sort of document management tool that you've got within your organization. But if it's out living on an island, then it's just another, there's more overhead for you to manage and take care of it. I also remember when a user uses a work email address, but not under the account, say in one of the tools, <laughs> and then you want to get that yep. information in. Do you, you, yeah. You've got to pay more money to bring oh, all those things in. So there's some sort of bulk. Yep. Both migrate. Yep. You've got to pay for that. That's that's 
but Ooh, I, that's I, a great it marketing does, term. It, it works does great. come down to management. Why don't you tell us what where you what your thoughts are? My thoughts are that in the ideal scenario, sure, if, such as I'm striving for, yeah, that you would not use a third party research tools. Your you content partner. You use a content partner. Yeah. You all your research tools. Yeah. And only that. And you So if you're using Box, Box Sign. You're way further. Should, should I add another one? Box and Ignite. Is this another one? Yep. If you Box have Ignite. Ignite. The Microsoft's the only one I know of that doesn't have doesn't have some solution. <laughs> Whatever the solution might be, you want doc, you want your CWM structure yeah. and your signature structure to be one, so that you're sending out a document for routing. Yep. And that's going back to its original source where it came from. Yep. And that the original and the newly signed PDF and any audit log are all in one location. That's like the Conga example I just gave you. Yeah, Conga's. That's that's that that, is a that's, exactly that, but that, that, that's one that, that's not your that's not your document repository. That's another third party for contracts only. For Correct. contracts, it's our that, that for contracts is. only. It's another third party that exists outside of your con, your data management sort of like if you took your unstructured data structure as a whole, like your pyramid of unstructured um, data. Okay, I, I see where you're going. Then you have this yeah. other so unstructured space. data environment. You're you're detached. If you want to go, remember when we talked about the UCBL? Oh, I, fucking A, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I never want to hear that again. UCBL, Unified, Unified <laughs> Cloud Backup, backup layer. layer. Oh, my gosh. i got to write that down. Well, no, we, don't. No, we don't. built it at AMAG, <laughs> and we made it, it work. <laughs> the problem was because we had all these de-unified or misunified or ununified data structures. And how do you get all that shit together? So my belief is this, uh, on this, is that you should have e-signatures as part of CWM going to the same yeah. place where you have your central yeah. data repository for unstructured data. Every every content provider, whether it's Microsoft or it's Box or it's, or it's Dropbox or Ignite or any of these guys, like it seems like that that, that, that that e-signatures should be like such a what are they rendering? A PDF and they're overlaying a signature. You can do this in Apple Preview. Like, like how hard is it? Yeah. Why don't they all do it? There's a, there's a, there's there's two additional actions. There's the encryption action. Has to be there's scared, the encryption right? action and the log action. You don't get a log action in Preview. Microsoft should buy DocuSign. Or, or, or Adobe. Uh, I'm sorry, Adobe. Um, or Oracle. One of the two. Because they're the only ones that are out there. It feels like to me. What are you shaking your head for? What are you talking about? I'm saying that if someone needs a signature solution as a contract provider, there are a lot of great signature companies that are out there who, who could very easily integrate with their solution. There are many that already exist. It's just that the, 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 well, like you said, the trusted it. vendors are already embedded in Chris companies. Sign. Chris Bosign has been around forever. We would make $100,000. In theory, DocuSign, like DocuSign is almost transparent. Yeah. With co like you get a DocuSign email. And they have a great API. Yeah. They have a great API. Oh, the API is talking. wonderful. It just routes things around. Then the, the, the final PDF goes into some a other place. Structured database. And it's there for in perpetuity. You know where to get it. So you think. And, until you change until, systems. Until it's not there. And you can get it back. Yeah. And you get a copy in your email. Adobe right. Nine times out of ten, Adobe, I, I, Adobe is going to explode. I, I think that's that's one of my because they have seven hundred and twenty-four products. I think Adobe is a very and nobody knows what any of them are. I think Adobe is a very under the radar company, even though they make tons of money. I think their whole business. What are you model, talking about? Under the radar, not under the radar for what they do, which is creative business, right? Right. I and for and for keep going. I'm just saying, I think they're going to move into new worlds, not just in signature. I'm not saying signature. See, they, they, they maybe, have. A, maybe Adobe will get AI capability. Rending graphical and AI. Formats. No, no, no. I'm not saying AI. I mean, well, they are doing Spark and that type of stuff. I get it, but I think, I think, um, they have a. They're one of these companies that 
people think of them in like this creative light. And I think they have a big, like a big um, digital uh, future. <laughs> Docking. Containerization. Like a, the big D word. Do they have Docker? <laughs> no, like take, Docker. I think they buy Canva. I think that will happen. Oh my God. How about right, right. actual. Uh, I'm just that, thinking, that, is a, some, that is a hundred. some Mike Christmas predictions. That's a hundred vendors. You just hit a hundred vendors. No, I'm just. You think I'll get in the storage space? I bet they buy Microsoft. I bet they buy Microsoft vendors. I bet they buy Microsoft Paint. Yeah, uh, how about we talk about general as general general things like um, um, red, blue, green, yellow, apples, and pears. And you lemons. think they'll get into storage? Oh, Mike, you're just getting upset now. No, I'm not. I'm just. Saying, yeah, you like, are. You were talking about Adobe. I'm just saying Adobe. I think is. Have you ever pretty... tried to figure out anything about Adobe licensing? Doesn't that no? That's, I don't think it's licensing. Yeah, exactly. Whatever. No, Adobe whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. You need to take four hits of LSD. I'm not. I drink don't, half a I'm bottle of Jack saying, Daniels and then log into Adobe a management profile. Do you, do you have Adobe in your organization? Oh, yeah. Do you? Yeah. All right. I'm an unfortunate. So all that pain with licensing we have to deal with, and that's the way. You but can but, but I don't even know what products were licensed. It's like media, no, no, I'm just, I'm visual. Photography manager. Better I'm than Microsoft. Talking, I will I'm just say talking that. about futures. Like I think they have a great opportunity to capitalize on some of the stuff that's happening right I now. I hate you. You don't like Adobe. No, I don't like Adobe. I hate you for just saying that. Why? Why do I just care? I don't hate you. Why? Like I, I love you. I, I like it. I, I don't I don't I'm not heavily vested in Adobe in any way. I just see them like based on the products that they have. Like they've emerged and done a few things that's like, wow. Like I wouldn't expect that that's they're they're in this 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 space. Yeah, but Snagit does the same thing. It's completely. I mean, the stuff ding, is ding, so ding, expensive. Snagit, love you. Uh, love Snagit. Tech Smith, keep it coming. Camtasia, I can't stand it. Uh, can't stand. Uh, yeah, can't stasia. I um, can't stand. I uh, can't camstasia. <laughs> but oh, I love Snagit. I could buy a Mac and do most of that, like with the tools yeah, built in. Is, wow, is he doubling down on the slam. I love Snagit. Who doesn't think you wanted me to be honest? Just I do want to lay in, but. Adobe. Adobe? No, no. I'm not saying I know everything about all their products and everything else. I just think they have an opportunity you know what? to slide into this AI conversation. You hear about Dreamweaver? Dreamweaver is great. Macromedia Flash. You can build an <laughs> HTML3 website with Dreamweaver. I have one of those. With yeah. drop downs. And you can use Flash apps. I used to develop a flash for a while. I did. I'm cutting that part out. <laughs> no, I'll keep it. All right. A okay. ASP. All right. ASP. We are done. 2.0, too. Before Mike and I get into a brawl. No, I, I think it's, it's fair to continue. No, we're not continuing. Why not? I like Adobe. So what? Yeah. Okay, you like Adobe. I don't like Adobe. We totally lost the where we were going with the e I was trying to get, get oh, some general consensus on... The eSigs, it was good to store data in your general unstructured data storage environment. If Why don't you tell me what a knock on the table means? <laughs> yeah. we're, we're wrapping it up. No, that's not what it means. You gave us some ground. Look, this is a completely <laughs> open podcast. Everyone needs to know what the ground rules are. When, when I knock on the table, what's that mean? You have to go to the bathroom. That's right. Let's go. <laughs> right. I'm not just going to. Do you want me to leave? Where do I go? In the woods? Right outside the barn. Right. I'll be right back, guys. I gotta go <laughs> use the bathroom outside the barn. But I'm not I'm not I'm not cutting this part out. Oh. <laughs> I think Mike's she, going to the bathroom. I think she'll leave it in. I had like a gallon of Fiji water before I got here. Why? Because I'm very thirsty. Why are you still talking? Go to the bathroom. I'm going. Don't pee on the actual barn though. Do you want me to go in the house? No, no, just pee on the grass. All right. Keep going, don't stop. Mr. McBride. Are you going to come back? Yeah, I'd come back. All right. Next week is KSI. I think I can. We're probably both going to get fired. Oh my God. I, I think I can do next week. I'll buy you dinner again. I think I can do it. Right. I, ha I have to check. I'm not going to cut any of this out. We're just going to keep it all in. Okay. Who the fuck cares? That's the internet. I do. In a nutshell. I mean, the, the answer is there is no. The answer is it's always changing. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna 
So I'm gonna plug in that app for now. App scene. I'm gonna plug this chart. This chart. Love it. This chart. That's not gonna do. We're we're heavy users of Lucid Chart. I can't. Do Lucid it. Sparks. Eh. Not not so much. Eh. It's, it's uh it's an upgrade. Yeah. Lucid Chart just though. Ditch it. Every day yeah, I'm in. Yeah. Every day I'm in there. Yeah. My whole my whole company. I mean. What's it been? We've been using that probably since 2011. Yeah, Lucid Chart. That's super easy. Yeah, we have it. Lucid Chart is fine. Lucid Chart is an actual sponsor. Where are they? At? They're out of Utah, right? Yeah. Lindenville, I think. No, that's still not. Yeah. Is it like Ogden, Ogden, Ogden Utah? Utah or something like that? Wait, wait, wait. Mike! <laughs> Mike comes back from the bathroom and just drops the vendor's names. Oh, shit. <laughs> Why don't you just. All right, so next week. I, I got a, a NASCAR, NASCAR shirt. Next episode. We're gonna spend thirty minutes, and Mike's gonna read every single vendor name that he knows, <laughs> and then tell us how much he loves that vendor. I'm just gonna be quiet the whole time. I don't love all the vendors. No, I'm gonna and I'm gonna buy one of those little bells. You ding ding every single time you say a vendor name. Really? Yeah. That would be that would be funny. It would be funny. You can ring a bell every time I. The so whole, whole I think I told you before be ring. that or like an air horn. Uh, yeah. I think eh, eh, eh. I tend to see the positive in almost all of these tools and vendors and a lot of things. So, like, that's you. That is me to a fault, I think. Um, they all have pluses, and I usually see the pluses and get excited, and the minuses I sometimes don't see as clearly. So, that, that's yeah, you gloss over. That's it. honesty. That's... I just get excited when something new and I can help. That you can help the company or even our group out. And I want to jump on it. <laughs> oh man! There you go. Do I say the same vendor name? Microsoft. <laughs> no. It's, it's one that about a huge fan of. It's a little. Hilarious. Hilarious. Focus right. <laughs> That's for helping us produce this podcast right now. Focus right here. Oh, that's your sound card. Right. That's right. Whoa. Little red box. An Apple computer which needs more money. Whoa. Love it. Most guy? Most guy. Love them. They're the best.